just want you. Oh, <laughs> you okay? oh. <laughs> yeah, I bumped my knee. Oh, no. I hit my knee on the, the light of the table. <laughs> oh. Hi, guys. There's already 10 people in here. So th this is what happens when I actually say that I'm going to be going live. So we have everything set up a little different. Um, so we have our webcam up here above us. So it's going to look like we're, you know, looking down. Um, but just let me know in the comments if you can hear us. Because that's always the first thing that we want to make sure of. No, don't ask me to talk. Can you hear us? <laughs> Just let me know if you guys can hear us. Hi. I know it always takes a little bit for. Hi, CW and uh, SG. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Sophie. Okay, good. Hi, guys. You did not miss anything. We literally just started. Yeah. We okay, uh, don't do lives really ever, <laughs> or at least I don't. And she doesn't do them much. So setting up the process is. Uh, a learning curve. Yeah. He, he said my name. <laughs> Sophie. That's so funny. SoCal. We are SoCal as well. Hello from Ohio. Hi, Ohio. It's going to start getting super hot here. I think this is the last weekend that it's going to be in the 80s. And then I think it's going to be like 100 degrees or something next weekend. Yeah. We have a vendor event tomorrow, and it's a long one, a we day do. and night, and it's going to be warm. We do. But we're going to do it. And it's so funny because I know I made a whole video saying that we're not going to do any markets until, you know, the fall time, but then baby is coming in the fall, so I don't even know how that's going to work. Yeah, and we got invited, so <laughs> we can't say no. <laughs> so, um, but it's like a, it's a big, um, like you know, 4th of July event in our city and everything. So yeah. um, we're well, hoping. Yeah. Independence Day celebration. Cause it's not really on the 4th of July. They do it a week. Or yeah. Two prior. Yeah. Our city always does it a week yeah. prior. So they always shoot off the fireworks a week earlier. Um, so uh, I'm a little nervous <laughs> just because I am. Um, but I told her she can leave at any time and that I just man the show but and tell them that, uh, my my wife's pregnant. She had to dip. <laughs> but, I feel, but, <laughs> but I feel like I just want to stick it out because it's like, you know, we're not, you know, we haven't yeah. done one in a while. So we have had yeah. a break, but we're not allowed to leave either. Well, no. I mean, well, someone always has to be there, you know, but that's so. how it, that's how it typically is. So if you've never done a vendor event before, that's pretty much how it works is that you like once you you're set up, you can't just tear down at any time. Um, so yeah, 7 a.m. or 7:30 a.m. setup, and then fire marshals come at one to check your setup, and then I think it's you're not allowed to tear down till 9:45 or 10 p.m. after the fire till after the fireworks. So it's a long day, but yeah, we're gonna try not to get there that early because our setup really doesn't take that long. Um, no, it's just more of trying to figure out you know like where we're gonna be located at the actual event. Um, so, uh, but you guys can feel free. Can we make that bigger this? so we can see the, the, can you my, not, my eyes are just can you bad. Not see it? Yeah. Okay. You guys can start uh, asking questions of any kind. Thank you, Vicky, for the congratulations. Oh, Appreciate yes. It. Thank you so much. Sorry. If I'm missing yeah, any of your huge. comments, I, I apologize. Um, I'm going to try to. We can slow that down, right? Yeah. If it gets if it gets too too busy, we can slow it down. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Vicky. CW, thank you so much. You guys are such hardworking people, very inspiring, super sweet. Han, what's going on from Australia? That's sweet. That's far. I know, right? What time is it in Australia right now? Let me see. Um, Thank you for all your helpful videos. Yeah, that's all her. That ain't me. All the helpful videos. Nico. No, he's, he's definitely been in more videos recently, though. How to launch new candle collection, Holden Heart. Nice. Awesome. That's my new. That's super exciting. 
Is it like your actual like business starting out or is yeah, it a new launching. collection? He's launching it. And it's a collection. collection. Yeah, yeah. A candle collection. Yeah. That's awesome. Erica, your hair looks beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it's 10 a.m. in Australia. <laughs> wow. 10 a.m. Yeah. Uh, Yolanda, congratulations on your bundle of joy. I just started watching your channel. Thank you for sharing such great information. Thank you so much. I love when people say that they're just getting started with watching my channel. That's really cool. Um, you've, t you've taught him so well, you know, haven't I? Hold I on. He's, I was just looking at that. He's better than me now. I swear. I like used to be afraid to trim the wicks. I used to be afraid to la I, label the candles. I used to be afraid to label. I think the very first thing. I just didn't want to mess it up. The very first thing that you did was prepping jars. Prepping jars. Um, this. Doing and the wicks. Doing the wicks. Like yep. putting the wick stickers on there. Um, and then also, I think once you got a little bit more um confident a little bit it. more confident yeah. i was like do you want to try labeling the wax melts and yeah then, i like that it was you know it's square it's yeah, flat it, yeah it it's was pretty it was easy, easy pretty easy um and then but getting started with labeling the candles was a little bit more challenging okay so we got some questions coming in laura yeah always working i gotta stay busy i I don't like sitting around. I get lazy and tired. <laughs> I gotta. I, gotta I stay swear, busy. I don't have enough work for him. So he's gotta just, you know, keep himself. Like he he can get stuff done so fast. Me, I'm, I'm a little bit more. Uh, like I I take my time <laughs> with a lot of things. <laughs> okay, let me see. So. First question I see up here from Sophie. How do you think you will? balance having a baby in your business <laughs> i don't know we have no idea what we're doing yeah um we're just going to be honest with each other we're going to figure out timelines um i'm at the race shop one or two days a week and i'm i'm here most of the time um if i go full time you know maybe it's a tuesday through saturday type job uh, maybe Monday through Friday, and then work on the business at night, candles, doing vendor events, maybe on the weekends or Friday night if I schedule it off. But it really comes down to how exhausted you are from the day, because I might come home from work and I might be on baby duty. Yeah. You know, just to give her a break. Um, at least for a little bit. I don't. And that's the thing is like, I don't I know that I feel like my mind, my mindset is going to change a lot. I was going to say a little bit, but I feel like it's going to change a lot. Um, so I just, I don't know. It's so hard to know. Like so many people will say, oh, just, you know, kind of work the baby in with like your regular <laughs> life and all that. But I yeah. feel like there's going to be like the first few months, it's going to be such an adjustment period, yeah. especially since the, the they call it the routine. Yeah. We don't even know what the routine is yet. They say, once you get into a routine and a rhythm, it gets easier. Mm -hmm. So, so I think that once yeah. we like kind of I don't know. learn, yeah, maybe by the time he's seven months old, I'll have him stick in the wicks <laughs> and <laughs> I'll imagine? make him fill the tanks. Yeah. I'll hold him up while he fills the tanks. No, I don't know. We'll have, we're just gonna have a good time, right? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously gonna be a challenge. Um, it's not gonna be like you know super easy or anything, but at least we'll uh. We'll do our best, best we can. Um, we got one from Jennifer about uh, starting. Uh, brand new to candle making. Would love to hear your advice on number of fragrances to start with. So I have a video. Um, uh, I think in the thumbnail or something, I call it like the four to six rule. And I completely made that up. There's no rule. It's just something that I had made up. Um, but when you're first getting started, I think that one of the best things to do is to start off with a smaller number of fragrances than to overload yourself with way too many at once. Um, and that's to help you with multiple things, uh, with storage space, um, with just not getting overwhelmed with having to keep so many candles in stock. If you launch with, let's say 20 or 30 cents, um, that can be, you know, kind of overwhelming. So I recommend to start off with four to six cents in different categories. So for instance, you can do one floral, fruity, sweet, beachy, 
if you want to do like an earthy one, maybe like a spicy one, something like that to where you're going to kind of hit different categories to where you're going to be able to find a customer base that will most likely like at least one of the candle scents that you are going to be putting out. Um, but not so much to where you're going to get super overwhelmed and you can actually take down the cost of goods too, because you can get bigger bottles. Like even if it's like the five pound jugs or something. So if you're yeah, launching, we're, we're talking at first though, I, I almost look at it as at first, get as many samples from a supplier as you can, um, and make, make wax melts, just one of each scent and go to your friends and family. But didn't she say to launch with? Or did she say just to start um, to, oh, to, well, to start with, does yeah, that mean just to launch? start just getting in, dabbling into it? I mean, as far as fragrances to start with, I think to start is, you know, get a bunch of samples mm -hmm. and go around and your friends, family, coworkers, see what people like. And then once you have an idea of what people like, kind of shimmy it down the, okay. four to six yes. for when you actually put those candles out on the market. Yes. And mine was if you're launching the sense, because this yeah. question could, could be different. I'd have a different answer depending on um, the context of it. Because for instance, if you're just getting started, you've never made a candle, you're going through the testing process. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend to get a ton of fragrances at first. Even no, though but that's, that's why I say part. wax melts because wax melts, the cold throw really kind of shows what it's going to smell like. I know depending on the wax that can change if you're using coconut, or apricot, yes. things like that. Yeah. But but um, it's not so overwhelming um, because you don't have to do a burn test. You're just making a true, wax melt. True. If you're just if, if you're just wanting to test the fragrances, yes. But eventually, you're gonna obviously want to do it in a candle too. But just yeah. like what we're doing with the wax melts, we're just seeing at first. Yeah. Do we even once, like this? Once you narrow down what fragrances of those say wax melts people like, mm -hmm. then go shift it to okay now i know what fragrances now i'm going to do the test with candles yeah and then move on to that but if you're in the very beginning stage um and you are you don't even know why are you smiling at me like that because <laughs> we have two different opinions on no, it i no, love it no it's not that we don't it's not that we have two different <laughs> opinions it's just it depends on where you are in your candle yeah making if journey. you're launching your business and it's four to six if, Sense, if but you, if you're if you doing as a your, hobby, get no, a bunch of different no, fragrances. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you have, like, if you're just getting started with candle making, you have never made a candle, tested a candle, anything like that. Don't just purchase tons and tons of fragrances and no, focus on that. That's going to be expensive. You have to just get one fragrance and test with it. Um, and then you can go from there. And then once you have your basic formula down with your jar, your wick, your wax, everything in there, and you know, then you can really branch out and be like, okay, now I can focus on the scents that are going to be in the line. Okay. Yeah. Cause um, you're, you're creating a, a base um, yeah. for the test. Yes. So okay. that's why, but then when it comes to actually launching, that's why I say four to six and you don't have to <laughs> 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 wax melts are so easy though i'm not and, saying that wax melts aren't easy no but you get a good sense of what it's going to smell you know what yeah it will smell like yes because um, out of the bottle and a candle and out of the bottle and a wax melt is different but you may find that when you make it in a candle the wick just with the flame like the the hot throw yeah. isn't as there yeah. as as in the and wax melt the oil's thicker it but it, different, but right? it does give you a good indication of what it actually is going to smell like when blended with wax, even if it's a different kind of wax. Yeah. So that's good. Well, see, you, you taught me things, and now I'm at the point where I challenge you. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. swear, I, I was helping him. Um, create a monster. I was helping him. Well, he's super, like, particular, very, very particular with things. But I was helping him um, just. Uh, what was I doing? What are you looking at? Well, I'm looking for a comment because oh, I don't yeah. want to like skip over other no, comments. Oh, uh, let me see. Uh, somebody said, so excited for you guys, fellow boy mom here, and it's such a fun adventure. I know we're Very so cool. excited. It's a boy. Uh, love your can your business related videos. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kat. Do you recommend finding a candle making kit from Amazon? Where's that question? Uh, right here. Uh, right here. Yeah. Um, would you recommend buying a candle making kit from Amazon? Um, I think it just depends on what you're 
intention is. So I have never personally gotten a, a candle making kit from Amazon. Um, but I think one of the negatives to that is that a lot of the times um, it's not uh, like the the supplies that they put in there is not supplies. How do I even know how to put this? The, like the, the, the quality wicks, of the goods that they provide you. Like may they, not be it great. It enhance your experience. Like or you may you, not even know what products you're working with. That they're just yeah. like, oh, this is soy wax and this is a cotton wick. Like that doesn't really help you if you're like, if you, let's say, like the ingredients in there and oh, you're yeah. wanting to get more. Knowing the source of each yeah, item. And knowing what it is. So like, okay. for instance, like Eco Wix, CD and Wix, yeah. you know, LX Wix. Most of the time it'll just say like wick or cotton wick or something like yeah. that. Um, we'll just so say white wax, yellow wax. <laughs> no, it might say soy wax. wax. It might say soy wax, but yeah. um, but it's you know you don't have that. Yeah. But I guess on Amazon they have reviews. Yeah, you know, find one with the highest but, reviews and but, try it out. But why if not? you're just wanting to have fun with it, I don't see why not. Yeah, I did. I made my first candles with Hobby Lobby wax, and it was a blast. Um, yeah, and I didn't have any knowledge of candle making at all. It wasn't even like a thought in my head of to make it into a business. Um, okay, so. You know what, better yet, we have two left in stock. You go to our website and you can <laughs> find a great candle making kit. We do, we do have two of our candle making kits left in stock on the website. Um, so let's see, thank you. Just such nice comments. I learned everything from you. You taught me so much. Keep doing what you do because you've helped a lot. I love how you explain everything. Um, have you used any new waxes? Uh, no. So I think what's hard is that um, we I do actually have a box of like miscellaneous kind of waxes. But and I know I've used this as an excuse all the time, but sometimes it can be a challenge to do like make time to try out different waxes and new waxes and stuff like that. Um, so as of lately, I haven't tried any new waxes. Um, I think the last time we tried a new wax was the sand wax was the last time. Yeah. <laughs> which was interesting. And uh, I think Mother's Day, I used some coconut apricot wax and made wax melts and some candles for my mom. I think I think that was, uh, was that oh, Mother's yeah. Day? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, or his... was that her birthday? I don't know. We drove up there. It was her birthday. It was her birthday. It was her birthday. Okay. Yeah. Let's shift down a little bit. Because we were about trying, right there. Trying to catch up. I know. And I'm, we're sorry if we miss any yeah. of your guys' questions or comments. Um, let's see what. Thank you, Willer, for the congratulations. Yeah. Thank you um, so much. I'm doing four fragrances of soap, four fragrances of candles for my first show. Very cool. And it's having four of that is probably really easy to manage. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and then definitely. you can even carry more inventory of those four for yeah. your event. Um, let's see. Sophie, no problem on answering your questions. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Um, I'm six and a half months along in the pregnancy. 20, 26? 26. 26 weeks. Which it gets confusing sometimes with the weeks and the months. Well, so. thank you for the congratulations. Um, what tips you um, how do you make wax melts? Same as a candle. Um, it's the same basic process, but it's yeah. much easier. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to worry about the inclusion of adding a wick and adding heat to it. Um, so it's really just a matter of melting down the tart wax that's specifically for wax melts, adding in the fragrance oil, pouring it into whatever mold or you know, we have our clamshell molds, but people do all kinds of molds um, for wax melts. And then you let it cure and harden. And it is, it is so great. I feel like so many people that do candles and wax melts, like we all agree that wax melts are just, it's the best. Do you agree? Wax melts are the best? Uh, yeah, I, I like them a lot. I like wax melts a lot. What do you like um, making more candles or wax melts? There's nothing better than finishing a candle you put the label, the label on, on the it lid. and just sit and it's like <laughs> done and um but when i gotta knock out a couple hundred 
uh, wax melts for sure. It's just like yeah, boom, boom, wax boom. Melts for yeah. Sure. And you can really like yeah. lay them on the table. Uh, and let's see. Joaquin is asking about ProBlind 600 versus coconut apricot wax. I have no idea. <laughs> I've never tried no uh, ProBlind 600. I have tried coconut apricot wax. Um, so I guess it can kind of speak on that one. I would say that a lot of waxes like Coconut 83, coconut apricot wax, soy bliss, even soy 10 to a certain extent. When you get that kind of wax that's in uh, that's in slab form and it's softer and it's creamier. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, they're all yeah. going to be really good. Now, I don't know if the Pro Blend 600 is like that or not. Um, but in my personal opinion, um, in the small amount of testing that I've done with coconut apricot wax, I actually haven't gotten as great of a hot throw with that one as I have with coconut 83, soy 10 and soy bliss. But I don't want to say that that is something wrong with the wax. I think that it may have just been my small amount of testing with it. So, uh, wick types, um, SG is saying, uh, what are the major differences in wicks? Um, it says, oh, that's a good. Different cores in cotton. That's a really good question. Um, I think that the main differences in wicks, because I don't think that wicks are actually made with lead anymore, even though I know that a lot of people, me included, will use that because um, not as like a marketing tactic, but I guess kind of like a marketing tactic where you say that you're making a candle using lead free cotton wicks, you know, phthalate free fragrance oils, lead free yeah. cotton wicks, so all that is, kind of this stuff. This is lead free? Yeah, that's lead free. But I think so that this is a CDN2. This is a CDN1. And they look exactly the same. One might look a little thicker than the other, but. If they were laying down and got mixed up, oh, that's a thing. I have like, no idea. No, that's the, that's the thing is like if you have a wick out and about out of a bag, you can't. But, uh, as far as in a candle <laughs> and the size of the vessel, right? But in terms of like the differences between like the are if you're asking about like what are the differences between like the different types of wicks, so like eco wicks, CD and wicks. Um, LX wicks, all that kind of stuff. I think that a lot of it has to do with the, like the, um, what do you call it? The, a lot of them have a coating of a higher melt point wax on them. Um, so I think that that may have something to do with it. To be completely honest, I don't actually know what the difference is. But um, some burn cooler and some burn hotter. Yes. Yeah, so like definitely depending on the size of the vessel. So for instance, the CD series and the CDN series are different, but they're basically the same wick. It's just that the CDN series has a um, a different coating on the wick, I believe. And uh, it makes it burn a little bit cooler, which is what I really like. Um, so I had changed it over to that. Um, but overall, I actually, I don't know entirely about um, exactly the differences between all the wicks. And SG, I'd say try, try a bunch of different ones. You know, why not? I mean, you're trying it out. You can make oh, yeah. changes on waxes because she... Uh, SG asked about uh, down below other, you know, what, okay. how many waxes to start off with or to try out. Oh, okay. Um, I'd say go for it and um, get a little bit of, of I wouldn't say everything because it might I, be overwhelming. Yeah, I, <laughs> I would say um, if there's, so I made a, in my beginner candle making series, I just put out a video recently talking about waxes. And in that video, I recommended that if you're just getting started with waxes, um, to kind of just use your intuition. So if there's a wax that you're like, man, I kind of really want to try that, or I know I want to stick with, let's say coconut wax. And then you can kind of go through a couple different coconut waxes and really experiment because in the very beginning, you may not know exactly what is good and what is not good until you experiment a little bit more with it. And you really get a feel for the candle making process. See any questions? Uh, um, somebody said, have you tried coconut wax? Uh, yeah. So I yeah. actually, I really do like um, coconut wax. That was actually the candle wax that I wanted to try from like the very, very beginning. But then I got hooked on soy 10. Super white. Yeah. I like it. It, it. Yeah, it looks really, really good. It's really bright. And, and it's creamy. Yeah. 
It's great. Um, it is very, very soft, uh, very low melt point, I would say. I don't know how in comparison to soy 10, I think it may be right around the same. Um, but if I worked exclusively with coconut wax, I probably would blend a little bit of beeswax into it personally with our jars that we use. Um, same thing with soy 10, just because it can be a little too soft and burn a little too hot. Bring it a little closer. Okay. Bring it down. So you now we can see. make it larger. Are you not able to read that? Yeah, but it doesn't. Um, we got to keep scrolling. It doesn't move down on its own. No, I know. So it I like. Locks in. I like that because then it's like then oh. we can keep going. You know. Oh, okay. And we don't have to scroll back up. Um. Yeah. See, Lori said Amazon has natural soy wax. The wicks worked well, but they are mystery wicks. Oh, yeah. Okay. See, see, that can be hard when you don't know exactly what. Yeah. Um. And then, um, is that uh, Avi? Is that a a v a v? How long should you keep your fragrances for? I have fragrances left over from the fall of 2020. Wasn't sure if I should toss them or buy new ones. Um, it's really about how you're storing them. Mm -hmm. A dark, you know, cool room. Mm -hmm. uh, no so direct it's, sunlight. Yeah, on it's them. definitely gonna last longer, um, especially if um, making sure that cap is on tight and not just like loosely on because mm -hmm. of that air and oxidiza oxidization. Yeah. Right. And, um, you'll be able to tell if you, uh, if you open up the oil and, and pour it, you can see it darken. So it, like, the oil, itself. the oil will, will be darker. You'll notice a difference in the smell, smell right? of it. Yeah. That's what um, I figure. The yeah. Smell. Uh, we actually have leftover fragrances from last fall and winter, and mm -hmm. I don't have any problems using it for this season as long as the oils smell fine, look fine, all that yeah. kind of stuff. So, and, and we keep them in a closed room. Yeah, you know, they're not the, they're not out and about. They're they're in a dark room on mm -hmm. their shelves, and um, yeah, I mean, no sunlight or yeah, no anything yeah. to spoil them or anything. Um, so I would just say probably, uh, about, I've heard that they can last a year to a year and a half, depending how you store them. Um, but again, I think it just depends on the oil. So I would just check it to see if it's, you know, starting to turn a darker color. Um, and you're like, okay, this is, this is not good anymore. Um, let's see. Yeah. Hey, Nico. Um, it says here that uh, since November 2021, you know, he's been um, learning and um, says all sticks says your videos have helped. Yeah. I same thing. I made mistakes. I have made mistakes in the past that I thought I completely ruined it. Yeah, Whether think... it was the pouring, uh, spilling, um, trimming okay. the wick too short. Yeah. Um, and I, I would just be super upset so, with myself because so I, because I didn't want to let her down. Right. Mm -hmm. But I just had right. to keep learning from my mistakes and eventually it turns into autopilot. You do it, can do it without thinking. It just comes with time and yeah, mm -hmm. don't give up on it. If I could do this stuff, yeah, you can, you can do this stuff. Yeah, it definitely, um, it, it definitely is something that when you're first getting started with candle making with whatever, whatever candle wax or however you're doing it in the very beginning, you're just kind of hyper-focused on like, okay, I need to make sure that, that it's exactly like this every single time. And your mind is like focused a hundred percent on every little thing. And then the more that you do it, you're able to like, you know, listen to music or put on a YouTube video and just kind of, you know, enjoy the process. Um, and I've always been for the most part, pretty laid back with the candle making process. Um, I know I mentioned in a video, the only thing that I always make sure of is just the temperature of the wax when you add in the fragrance oil. That is the main thing that I am very kind of, and I, I didn't really get on him about it, but I was definitely in the beginning of him kind of learning more about the candle making process, you know, cause he would pour in, he would measure out the wax and then he'd walk across the room and then grab the fragrance oil and then walk over and then pour it in. And I'm like, no, you got to have it in your hand. It's got to be ready. The second then that <laughs> the temperature, the temperature, it's gotta be hot. <laughs> but that's the only thing. Sophie says mm -hmm. your, uh, 
your house smells really uh your house smells really good well right now it does because i'm going through all those wax melts i smell from uh midwest, midwest. uh fragrance co yeah um we put in um you made a ton of wax I made melts a ton so, of we're just going so we're just going through and breaking them off throwing them on them. every day it's a new scent right now we have the uh cherry, cherry lime twist cherry lemonade twist oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's like we a did the espresso lemonade. that was good um i did mix vanilla bliss with dark roast and vanilla bliss with espresso i like them mm -hmm. um the what is it called uh baja cactus blossom oh yeah we need to do that one we're next. gonna be doing that one next so yeah it, it okay when we're working and doing stuff we have the door closed but we have the fan the windows open you don't really smell it too much in the uh, living room and dining room or that our main apartment yeah yeah no so it's yeah. really not it's it's not that bad you know yeah as far as overpowering yeah, yeah. So. unless we make a coffee scent and then that's like everywhere it's in the vents it's yeah. like creeping through the walls our neighbors <laughs> outside walk by like, oh! it's like the most strong scent ever i swear um uh difference between lori says what's the difference between soy wax and soy tin wax Oh, oh, she thinks she's getting the same thing as how you, you used to think soy 10 was 10, T I N. But so, so it's soy with the number That's, 10. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, he, I never he understood. Thought that he, I thought because it was, it was 10. The way, it was the way that I say it's it. the way that I say it. I know I say 10 so instead of 10. They're 10. all 10. I say 10, 10 instead of 10. So yeah. it's like the number 10. Um, so it's just a type of soy wax. Um, it is um, oh, there's no label on this one oh. this box. it's it's made by um, by accublend it's actually accu yeah. soy number 10 10 10 um so oh wait no she corrected herself oh she did oh, so it, oh okay well sorry we didn't see that but um that is something that he thought from the beginning he was like wait it's not 10 t-i-n Oh, um, yeah. So that was just so, a setup. So <laughs> set me up. Set me up now. Everyone knows. What's the difference between soy wax and soy tin wax? Yeah. I mean, uh, for instance, 464 is 100% soy. Soy tin is not. Um, soy bliss is not 100% soy. So it just depends on the kind of, of blend that it is. Better K times launch all four. Then to add more. I was on. Yeah, uh, always adding more kind of helps. Uh, um, so you read so, the, you read this yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. So I I'm, don't know how to pronounce that name. I'm I'm pre-launch right now, and eventually I'd like to have four product lines. Cement vessels, container candles, pillars, uh, votive. Gosh, I never know how to pronounce that word. Uh, and wax melts. However, designing and testing all four, four product types is taking forever. Is it better to take my time and launch with all four, or should I launch with just one and then add more as time goes on? Um, I would say all four. Wait. I would say take your time. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I would yeah, say no. Take your time. No, Wait. I would. I would say. And because you want a variety, you don't want to just offer one, right? Tr true, but sometimes it's exciting when you have new products to launch and you're not launching everything at once. It's actually really exciting to have. Oh, new, we're not new talking products. about the scent. We're talking about the different variety the different varieties of, of vessels and options. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I would oh, say. Uh, then now I agree with you. Then. Yeah, I would yeah. say to just launch thinking... with with one or two, and then once you get more comfortable, then you can launch more. Now it's up to you. If you're finding yourself being super stressed out, and you're like. I'm not getting anything done and because you're it's broke from buying all the materials but, and inventory. But also you may be going through kind of a perfectionist mindset too. So you may be thinking I can't launch until every single thing is perfect. And if that's the case, then that's going to slow you down and you're going to inevitably use that as an excuse, which is what I've done a lot before in the past. If I feel like something's not completely perfect, I'm like, Oh, yeah. I can't. The candle think, making kits, man, yeah. it was like a year. Yeah, it was we a year. had to source and contact companies and get tester products and go through it. And we kept going mm -hmm. back and forth on is this good enough? Is this everything? Like, man, I this, wanted everything this, to be this like is really perfect. expensive, but it's really good. Yeah. And it's, it just took time, took a lot of time. And then we finally made up our mind. We finally did it. 
So I would say that um, whatever you're most comfortable with right now, like if you're just like, okay, wax melts are the easiest thing for me to launch with, um, then just launch with wax melts and then add in container candles or add in cement vessels or whatever it is. Like you don't have to feel like your business when you launch it, that that is like the exactly how your business is going to look forever. You know, like there's so much that can be changed and so many things that are yeah. different. Um CW says, how do you stay organized? That's a good one. Uh, a lot of a lot of it comes with like communication between the two of us. We keep each other on our toes of what do we have going on, what needs to be done. And then um having to try to have a neat area that you organize that you know in your mind's eye where things you put. Um I'd say labels. You can, if you have racks, label the racks of certain items. Um, I would say Inventora helped a lot on the quantities on things. Like actually keeping um, track of inventory yeah, and all that. Definitely. Yeah, that helped a lot. Yeah. Um, if you don't have somebody working with you, if you're by yourself, um, a planner, a schedule, um, a calendar, uh, a whiteboard, just writing things down, mm -hmm. seeing it every day, keeping things fresh in your head of what you have to do, what you've completed. And um, I would say clean, cleanliness, you know, keeping things. I mean, who am I to talk? Like, no, some, you're good. I'm I mean, terrible. to me, it's a mess, but um, it could be better. It could always be better, right? But um, as far as organization, having a cleaner area kind of helps you think a little better. Yeah. And yeah. that's why, I mean, even, yeah. even though this is a smaller workspace, even yeah, getting that all was a of huge this transition. Out, out of the living room, yeah, like I had a lot more space in the living room. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. But in terms of, that's just, why I feel like this place gets so cluttered or messy so fast because it's so much smaller. Yeah. But really everything's kind of labeled and in their place. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, obviously we had more space. It was prettier out there because yeah. I had all the, you know, shelves out. We had the racks. We like, have bins. We have baskets. We have little organizer tray um, drawers, like for our uh, wax melt samples. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. A hand, lot of. Hand me that. I don't this? know if that will come out. Yeah. This? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's stuck. It's stuck because yeah. of the like rack. It's like the three, three, three drawer. drawer. That um, helps. That you can get from Target or something like the mm -hmm. plastic ones. Um, so when it comes to organization, uh, if you're trying to organize like your, uh, your storage stuff, think of, you know, trying to fit as like, for instance, we're in just a little bedroom and we have so much stuff in here. Um, but with the way that we have it, we have racks, so it's vertical. So anything that you're able to kind of put up and keep up. Um, it, it will help with organization. A filing um, cabinet for all your labels. Yeah, that uh, helps. That a lot. helps. Or even like if you have a, what are those three ring binders, right? Um, and sleeves that you can put labels in, like a label book. Mm -hmm. Um, that helps because it doesn't take up a lot of area. Um, and then I have my um, I use Notion for like an actual like planner for the business, and it does so much to keep organized. Um, so I use Notion for that, which is... Hi, Mano. What do you see that? I see vegan cakes by Mano. Mario. Is it, is it Mario? Yeah. Oh, my god! Oh, you really can't see. And my eyes. Is it because it's, it's a it's tiny the, font. Is it because it's the black and then it's the white Maybe, font? Maybe. My bad. Maybe. Sorry, Mario. Um, let me see. Sorry, creative process. Oh, is there any sort of creative process that you do to create a new fragrance? That's really interesting. Um, I think that a lot of it, well, I mean, in the beginning, because of the way that, that the business is set up for with the nostalgia collection, a lot of it was just if I smell the fragrance and I'm like, oh, my God, that reminds me of such and such time. That would be kind of like the creative process mm -hmm. with that. But with this new candle line that that we're looking into launching soon, I'm definitely taking my time with thinking about more of a like a custom blend or like 
ways that I can take a scent that I really like and then maybe add something to it or like making it a little bit more um, unique because of m most of the fragrances that we use in the line are pre-blends, um, which is not a big deal. I mean, yeah, it's there's easier maybe to... four or five that are a mix, mm -hmm. um, but really you just got to have fun with it. You could mm -hmm. find too that you think, man, they're both good and those might be good together and, and life's good and you try it out and it's not good. <laughs> it's okay. You just mm -hmm. go on to the next. You just try to, um, find a scent that i don't know kind of wakes you up a little bit it's like whoa and and then you say what would that be good with and you try it out and if it works it works and i think that's the fun part of it is uh getting a little i don't know excited you gotta keep things exciting yeah yeah because and if you're not having fun and it's not exciting it's kind of like it turns into work yeah and, and I you think, don't want that and i think that you know i mean i kind of and with with having him be so much more involved in the business, I kind of found myself being like, oh, now I have somebody to like bounce ideas off of. But now I also have somebody to like give me their opinion on something that like what if I want to do something and then he's like not wanting to do it or something like that. And I feel like, you know, like even though he'll say, you know, this is still like all your business and everything, but with him doing so much, I'm like, no, it's our business together. We're married. We're, you know, like it's our business together. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes I, I find that I'll, I'll want to do what? something and then I have to You're like worried. almost get approval for you, <laughs> from you or from like, or no. like, or like he'll, or he'll kind no, of I just go with the flow most of the time. Or sometimes he'll, be good because it'll be kind of like a reality of like, Hey, did you think about this? Or maybe this might be challenging or, you know, something like <laughs> if that. It's really out there. I'll bring you down to life and be like, Whoa, hold up. But with this new candle line, you're not against that. No, no. Cause Why? it's fun. Just, try it's, out. Yeah. just like the, the, um, gold tins. Mm -hmm. We had a special order for the small tins and it's like, yeah, let's do it. You know? Yeah. There's no, and, and that down, was, and that it. was definitely something that was new for me because I'm, I'm somebody who's like, I will say no, like I'll say no to something. Out of you know fear. How, yeah. Like for instance, you know how there's people that are like, no, I'll say yes and figure it out. I'm like the opposite of that. But with that situation, I was like, you know what? I'm going to actually say yes and figure it out because I don't want to, you know, lose this opportunity to try something different. And I'm like, I know that I'll, I know that we'll be able to get it done and, and make it work. Um, Albert, no. Um, whenever we put our labels, sometimes in the software, we just have to like shift the design over a little bit. We notice that sometimes it comes off a little bit more on one side than the other. Um, but nothing, no problems with printing. Um, um, you see that? Yeah. Uh, do you guys ever have trouble printing your labels? We have the same laser printer and oftentimes it refuses to feed the labels no matter the settings. Also leaves some slight ghosting. Ghosting like uh, blank spots. You know what ghosting means? Yeah. I, yeah. You, I know. What, you stop talking to people. Yeah, right? <laughs> I know. Apparently that's. So, apparently the, that's the so the printer stopped talking to the page. <laughs> um, <laughs> um I mean, um, to be honest, no, but maybe we just got a lucky one. Um, uh, the only thing I can think of um, is it depends on your label design and it depends on if your labels are edge to edge labels or if they are not. So um, all printers and all um, so there's going to be a no print area on the paper on pretty much all printers i guess unless you have a specific printer that's Is that not like where that you choose actual size or like a percentage um, and then it makes the image a little bit different bigger or something no it has to do with the actual labels itself so for instance um i wish i had an example right here but for instance with our wax melt labels you know how the labels go literally to the edge of the paper mm -hmm. and then how our 10 our 10 ounce candles it, there's don't. a little border. They, yeah, there's a border. So that's edge to edge printing, <clears throat> meaning that you're able to print an image that has a design that goes all the way to the edge and it's not going to get cut off. I don't know if that's what you're referring to, um, but it may be a. Well, the ghosting could issue. possibly be is the ink or the laser. I don't know if there's ink in it. Yeah, there's ink in it, right? But it could uh, be where laser it's Laser is toner. Oh, okay. Maybe yeah, it could be means ghosting. It could be fading. 
Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm wondering what you mean by ghosting on that. Um, so shipping still scares me. I don't know why. Can you talk about it? It's, it's daunting. It really is daunting. I mean, he, it, it took him a little bit to understand yeah. because it's just, you're, you're learning the sizes. You're trying to figure out what's going to be the best shipping price based yeah, on and, what and you're. Is the address a real address or is it where it's going and is it going to get damaged or yeah, is so it packaged right? Yeah. Or, yeah. All that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a shipping playlist on my channel. So um, if you go onto my channel and playlist, I have a whole shipping playlist. Um, I also have a shipping course as well. So I put out that course, I think it was November, last November or something like that. Um, but it literally, literally goes through like step by step. Like if you're a complete beginner with shipping, it will go through everything up until like what to charge for shipping, how to know how much to charge, how to find the cheapest option, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so shipping can be intimidating. Um, yeah, absolutely. And that's why I'm like- Power burning, abusive burns, holy, testing phase. Well, I mean, I don't think we, I personally, I've never burned a candle for 10 hours straight. I won't, I won't do it when, especially with testing, we'll do four hours. Um, you see that? Yeah. So it's called, so it's called, um, power burns. Okay. So it's just like allowing the candle to burn for yeah. a significantly long period of time. So you know how it burns and all that okay. kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, that's like, I don't want to say controversial or anything like that. Um, but I think that what's, I think that it is important to see and to to make sure that you know within that time frame because I mean well, that's why we, we only fill that... them a quarter of the way or halfway and then test them where you get it's going to be hotter down lower yes. than it would be up top. Yes. Yeah. But even... but because like for instance we know that the if it, if we had it our way obviously customers would be trimming their wicks you know, only burning for 45 hours at a time. Yeah. Like, you know, like a friend of mine, Ty, he had a Saturday morning cartoons and he goes, Hey, it's out. And he brought it to, he showed it to me and it was down to the <laughs> bottom like, and it had only oh, been a man. few days. And I'm like, so we Dang. know that he like, like really burned through. I'm that. like, is that what happened? <laughs> so he needed a new one. And so just like, finish it super fast. So just like how I had, I put out a video that was talking about like never making a perfect candle or anything like that. Like, you can do the best you can with trying to do any type of scenario of burning and this and that and testing the temperature and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we can only do the best that we can, but it is important to, to learn how your candle burns. Um, yeah. And, and then, then use the heat through. gun to see how hot it's getting. Cause yeah. every vessel is different yeah. and yeah, it, you put a new vessel in, you got to check that just to be safe. And you know, I actually took a photo of this. I was at Trader Joe's a couple days ago and I don't know if you guys have seen at Trader Joe's how they'll put out like. Or if you have a Trader Joe's, it's like a little uh, I supermarket. Like, I feel like Trader Joe's is pretty well known. Well, right? I, don't, I don't know if there's one in Australia. That's true. That's no. I feel like most people have heard of heard of Trader Joe's though. Um, but they'll put out like a disclaimer at the checkout stand. And I took a photo of it. And apparently. Is it about candles? It's about their candles. Yeah. So their tomato leaf scented candle. It says that. May crack or break during use due to the glass jar overheating causing yeah. potential injury yeah, so or damage. Yeah, so probably a thin, thin wall vessel. Yeah, so that's why it's really important. And that's actually the next video that I'm going to be doing in the Candle Beginner series is talking about vessels because I feel like a lot of times, you know, you can go to like a craft store or something like that and be like, oh, this would be so cute to make a candle out of, but the glass is really thin and you have to be careful about that. So it's really... It's really a matter of, yes, how hot the vessel can get and if the vessel is thick enough to be able to handle the actual candle making process and being able to burn as a candle. Um, but I found that interesting and I'm wondering if that was a wicking issue, if that was just a glass issue with the quality of the glass that they had. Um, but I found that interesting. Um, let's see. This is a loaded question. This is what? a, this is hold my hand, walk me down the street around the corner. <laughs> Which one? Like I'm reading, I'm like, man, I got to wrap this around my brain. <laughs> so Which we got one? for soy 10 and bees, 
beeswax, uh -huh. how the temperature to add fragrance. So what temperature to add fragrance uh -huh. and pour in using an eight ounce, what oh, wick size, size. I want to ask um, to you when, when you start, what, what size, size of tins and jars suggest to work? So when it comes to working with soy tin, um, I would recommend to try out a couple different uh, series of wicks. It, it's really, it, it's so going to vary on so many different factors. Um, you have to take into account the diameter of the jar that you're working with. So for instance, um, when you're saying like an eight ounce jar or an eight ounce 10, like there could be different diameters. Um, Taller, short, you know. Yeah. So, um, so, senior wide, so. So that's the most important part when it comes to that testing process. Um, but I wouldn't know which size to, to, you know, suggest for that. Um, I can recommend to you that I personally have like the eco series and the CDN series for soy 10. Um, but you just have to kind of go through and, and go through the testing process to see. Um, yeah. So maybe you have five of the same vessel, um, and then, uh, prep them with, uh, a di each one's a different wick and label it. So you'll have like a, a size four, a size five, a size seven, a size eight, you know, it could be any of those. And then you're going to um, heat up your wax and you and mix them with soy. So you want them both saved there at the same temperature. Um, I've always been told pour at 195, between 195 and 200, you know, to happy medium. Be consistent with pouring, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, that is the fragrance, like right away after you got your measurement. And then um, do a base test. So, you know, they're all the same fragrance. They were all poured the same heat. Same percentage. Same percentage. Everything right? the same. Right. Except for the wick size. Yeah. The only thing that's different is the wick. Right. And then trim the wicks exactly the same. Cure them for a mm, week and a half, two weeks. And then do a four hour um, test. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't have Before. any windows open, like as far as wind or draft. Yeah, which don't can have be, your AC on, which right? can be a, a little fan. challenging in the that, summertime. That, that flame is gonna be going yeah, crazy. You want which, a very still, relaxed flame. Yeah, You're gonna get movement get, no matter what, and you'll notice yeah. the difference between the smaller wick and then the larger. Let's say the eight compared to the four. Uh, some melt pools will take longer than others, and then you'll start to see. Okay, you labeled that candle. What? quick size it was and you'll go okay i like that one that one looks the best mm -hmm. and then what you'll do is maybe make five more or three more of just that wick and then try different fragrance oils and also don't judge a candle by the first burn i would say yeah you want to make sure that you're burning it although no you were fine that was great okay yeah no you were great no i wasn't yeah, I'm just going off wrong. of like when we do testing as yeah. far as my experience of yeah. like, okay. I no, I wasn't saying you're wrong. I was just saying that sometimes like if you're going through the burn test of that first, that first burn, that first four hour cycle burn, a lot of times you can rule out a wick way too early because you're like, oh, that's going to tunnel. And then you keep going through the burn test and you're like, okay. Yeah, because then halfway down that temperature changes. And it's then it does, and ends up and not it, tunneling. Yeah. And then it, and sometimes, okay. yeah, because yeah, sometimes yeah. there can be a little bit of hang up of wax on the side and that's totally yeah. fine. Now, if it's really tunneling, that's what you don't want. Um, yeah. But um, is it um, McKiss Smith? Yeah. I, I don't even, most of the time, but you are so much better about at least attempting. Yeah. Names. We, we so are still using names. soy 10. Um, and then we do the blend with uh, beeswax. Yes, yeah, still using beeswax we like it. Um, we like it. Sometimes we just do straight soy ten on some testing, where we don't add in the beeswax. Um, when I made the candles for my mom for her birthday, I didn't put any beeswax in it. I just did straight. Um, what was it coconut eighty? I think we've done both coconut eighty three. Yeah, I think it was. And then the, it was just coconut eighty three. Eighty three. Or coconut apricot. I can't remember. Yeah. It was one of those. Um, how do you not get your candle? How do you get your candles to not melt during shipping? Okay. Um, so this one can be a challenge um, because obviously you never know how long it's going to be sitting during transit. So yeah, like we'll try to ship the next day. But if it is a Saturday or a Friday and we know it's Monday. going far, it's going to end up sitting in somewhere 
not moving, not yeah. in transit, but they'll have the package which is going to sit there all day Sunday. Yeah. We don't really like that. So um, a, a lot of people, um, and I had started doing this a couple of years ago. I think I learned it from Tiana. We got this um, stuff. Was uh, shipping out only Monday through Wednesday um, to trying to make sure that, you know, it's not going to sit. This. We also have this thermal bubble wrap. Yeah. Um, like wrap the candle. Wrap the candle, which I heard from some people that it doesn't make a difference unless the candle is completely wrapped up. But I found that it does make some sort yeah. of a difference. Um, you also have to think about the melt point of your candles, too. So the fact that we do add beeswax in helps to raise the melt point a little bit. Um, but I've never gotten from a customer saying that our candle is like completely liquid or anything like that. No. It's mainly like the little bit of like drops Sweat. or sweating on top, which is normal. But again, we can only do the best that we can when it comes to shipping candles in the summer. Um, somebody said, have you worked with wooden wicks? I have not. Mm -mm. Um, I really... I don't know. I, I really like the concept of wooden wicks and I really like the sound and like the little crackle and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I have not branched out. I don't know. I hear the crackle. Yet. I'm like, things going to blow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ducking and dodging because it's crackling. I don't know what it's going to do. But I'm sure they're fine and safe. I just really don't have experience with them. Yeah. Um, Seen that warning and giving up my business card in case you have to explain. Oh, okay. They're talking oh, about oh, I've that seen that. Oh, I've Trader seen that Joe's. warning. Ended up giving my yeah. business card to cashier after explaining. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. No, I think that it's good to. Um, I mean, obviously, when when it comes to the business that we're in, there is some education that goes into it because. 99% of people have no idea that can't, which is so funny because it's like, it's fire. <laughs> so you would think that it would be more well known about trimming wicks and, and not leaving your candle burning mm -hmm. overnight while you're sleeping and all that kind of stuff. You know, mm -hmm. like you would think that it would be common. Yeah. Common but when knowledge. we're cooking on the stove and the pan's hot, not even thinking we go and grab the pan we go, Oh, you know? Yeah. It's just, it, it's things people don't think about. That's true. They I mean, I guess I, for candles, it's like the store, there's, they don't give you instructions. And there's so much that goes on in everyday life that like the last thing you want is something that's supposed to be relaxing to be yeah. a hassle or to be something that you have to like, you know, I mean, I've seen the videos and stuff like that on TikTok where there's people commenting like, it's just a candle. Geez. And it's like, See, yeah, but you wanna... I thought in the beginning, I always thought that, my mom would trim the wick. Thought, thought she'd do that. I remember she had that little snuffer, that little bell on the stick snuffer. But um, trimming the wick was to eliminate the black soot. I never knew that by trimming the wick, it would make the candle last longer and it would perform. I don't want to say cooler, but it would. It would perform. It would perform better. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was to eliminate that that black soot. Mm -hmm um luna for your question sorry for skipping it um it's not an intention to skip it at all it's just <laughs> trying to just Where, find a luna? question there it is right here so did you use the same wick do do do, do you, you do you use for oh my gosh sorry do you use the same wick no did you use same wick for same vessel, vessel size, size or do you make or or you make okay so do we do wick? we use the same wick yes, for so all of the all of our sizes. fragrance oils, um, all of our vessels, all of our wicks are exactly the same. The difference is the wax blend um, between the sizes of the vessels. Right. So right, we, right, right, right. we I basically go around changing the wick by adjusting the wax blend slightly. Um, and that's just depending on how it's going to burn. Yeah. Um, so our large and small, they have the same, our, and our large Evermore, all three sizes. They have the same wick and um, the just, same blend, but the ratio and percentage values change. Yes, between the beeswax and the soy ten. Yeah. So adding more beeswax is going to harden up the wax and make the candle burn cooler. Adding less beeswax is going to soften up the wax and make the candle burn hotter. Hey, our Evermore jar is straight soy ten. Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. Yeah. So no, I'm sorry. The Evermore jar, our largest size, 
uh, that is straight toward 10 and has no beeswax. But the wick is still the same size. Let's see. How can you find other information? Yeah, that label. So Jennifer, about the warning label and finding out what information has to go on the warning label, what we did is we actually, what was it, the attorney? Uh, no, he had no idea. He had no idea? He, <laughs> he didn't no look idea. up any like fire safety, any rules? Or... So, so it's basically, um, there is, uh, I believe it's the, what is it called? I'm blanking on it. Um, I have a video on that, uh, that I made a little while ago and it goes over, it's like the standard information. You have to have the warning. You have to have like the little pictures on the warning label. Um, and, uh, some like, it's like, uh, keep away from flammable items, uh, keep away from children and pets. And then something else I can't remember, but I have a video on it on my channel. Um, and it just goes over, you know, like the basic, the basic warning label stuff that you can get at even like the stickers that you can get at any candle supplier or anything like, like candle science or something. They have like the pre-made ones. Yeah. But um, once you have it, you're done. It's like <laughs> oh, relief. Yeah. Like you got it on, you just put it on the candle. You don't got to really think about it. Just got to make sure to remember to put it on and we're good. Yeah. Um, and that's one less thing that you have to worry about. Yeah. Um, so thankfully, we have not had to deal with any issues with customers threatening to sue due to issues with vessels or some or oh, other man. factors. Um, obviously, that's like a worst nightmare yeah. um, situation. Um, personally, uh, our business is incorporated. So there's kind of this layer of protection above the business. We also have um, disclaimer cards that I had my attorney actually draft up and we have a checkbox on the website. So people have yeah. to check it off before purchasing. They also get it in the order. There's the warning label at the bottom. So, you know, you can just do the best that you can, but education is going to be the best way to move forward. So adding in candle care cards can really help even just try to get people's attention when it comes to stuff like that. Um, but no, luckily. Uh, how do you keep your candles from sweating at Marcus, uh, markets? So it's CW. Uh, we just do night markets. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, we, except for tomorrow. Yeah, so except we'll for tomorrow. Um, our easy up for our little booth area, we put up the walls, the panels um, to block the sun. Basically, keep them, keep them out of the sun as much as possible. Keep them out of the sun. Um, we will, uh, I'll grab one. I think we still have one. What are you grabbing? The candle in the boxes we put them in. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully we're not going to be. Um, yeah, this might this might help. Is you put them in like little gift boxes um, with some crinkle cut. At least the sun isn't like hitting the candle baking. It has some layers to it. Yeah, a little that, bit. I that mean, it might could, help. It could still get a little hot. Um, I know some people will keep their candles like behind, you know, behind their. Um, set up and everything to try to keep it out of the sun as much as possible. We've gotten really lucky. Really lucky. With yeah. with markets. Yeah. Um so I don't have a ton of advice for that unfortunately. There was a day, it was a Sunday, and I think it was maybe one o'clock or one thirty. And you could see the shadow, the shade, the line of the easy up coming towards us. As the sun was moving and all day we're, we're watching just, this this yeah, shadow come. Yeah, yeah. And before yeah, you yeah. know it, the, the candles were in direct sunlight and we're just watching them and watching them. We're just like, oh man, they start to sweat a little bit. And this was in Temecula. This was probably 80 degree day. Um, it was a warm day and um, you just gotta Ew. hope for the best. Shimmy your table away from it little by little. You know, run away from the sun. It was, uh, but night markets, night yeah. markets are key. We prefer yeah, those. Prefer night markets. Um, now, of course, in the summer, night markets are still going to be slightly day markets. Um, yeah, that's because, true. Because you night set up at three, starts at. 
five. Yeah, and but sun doesn't go down to like eight. Seven thirty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. Seven. So yeah. so you are still gonna have to deal with that. Um, but most of the time, the sun is yeah. in a certain direction, so. It's Depending not like, on which way your booth is facing, yeah. it's the luck of the draw. Yeah. Um, and again, we've gotten really lucky. But the panels on the walls really mm -hmm. help. And then, of course, having it easy, up, having that, that cover. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's our experience. Yeah. With it. yeah. So I wish there was some like really good tip that I had, but that's, yeah. you know, we <clears throat> put all your candles on ice. Yeah. Put them on ice. Um, I'm a beginner. Can you tell me which waxes need bigger wicks? Coconut, paraffin, soy, and gel. Um, it, it, it just What's depends. Gel? gel wax. Is it the, is that little balls, little gel balls? No, it's, if you've ever seen, I'd have to show you a picture. Okay. Um, I've never worked with gel wax at all, so I have no idea about it. Um, I've also not worked strictly with paraffin wax, but I feel like that wax is a little bit harder in consistency and has a higher melt point, possibly. Coconut and soy typically have a lower melt point. So when you look at it with the melt point, um, that will typically tell you if it needs a bigger or a smaller wick. So beeswax, high melt point, like 140, 145 degrees Fahrenheit versus a soy that's like 120 to 125. It's going to require different sizes of wicks. And how so, big? Yeah. So that's why we add in a little bit of beeswax yeah. because it kind of brings up that total melt point to help make the candle burn a little bit cooler so it just it just depends um yeah kayla well yeah there's some night markets um at least where we are in southern california uh luckily um there's some night markets mm -hmm. um, um and there's different companies like on instagram that uh you know will post their events whether it's a handmade local market or if it's a what's the other one I know that there's like that female market where it's uh, females yeah. only businesses. The female there's, maker market. Yeah, uh, maker market. Mm -hmm. There's. Um, yeah, you just look for different. Um, so there's different management companies uh, that should be in your area if there are events that are put yeah, on in your city or local. Some might only do weekends. Cities. Some might only do a Tuesday morning. Some mm -hmm. might only do Friday nights. Mm -hmm. You know, there's one event we go to where it's the last Friday night of every month. Yeah. We were doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So you just got to research it. You know, hopefully that wherever you're located, that there's some options, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so what ma what makes people buy our candles? What's, oh. so, what's so special about it? Because <laughs> uh, it's so good. Well, like, like we know. know. Like, I know. I know that our candles are really good candles. Like, I know that they're really good. We, like, when I, for instance... How do I even put this? So <laughs> stop. <laughs> I'll tell you so, what, when we're at the no. racetrack and I'm at the track and um, I bring a bunch of candles with me, these people at the track are buying them because of me. Wait. I'm forcing it down their throat, telling them, hey, man, you know, you're here riding, having a good weekend and your wife's at home. Better bring home a candle. But it's not just because of that. You have so many of your friends that will reach out and ask to purchase more. And same, with, good. and same with my friends too. Like when you have people that are close in your life, family, friends, anything like that, that are actually like reaching out to you and being like, Hey, I want to buy more, or I want to get more of this scent or, you know, and you're not constantly being like, try this. Do you want this? Like, do you want to buy this? If it's coming at you the other way and you know that your product is so good that people around you in your life are purchasing from you, not just as like, I never wanted to get a pity, like, I didn't want to well, get like a pity sale from no, people no, that were just I, buying I mean, just to buy it. I, I want them to actually like it. And I've actually given candles away for free. Uh huh. It's like, and then they end up go. they end up Take buying it. more. Hopefully you like it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. If, if they if they love We've it and they lot. continue to support it, or if they buy even one, um, awesome. If they don't, I still feel good about just giving them a candle. You know. Yeah. I, the room spray, car sprays, uh, wax melts. Um, That's actually something so I, that I've, I've brought up before in a video yeah. that it sounds funny to just like give away your product, but yeah, so it can kind of sell itself. Like people will be like, I want that a again. Month, a month or two ago, maybe three months ago, four months ago. So, okay, we made these kits. We made these sample bags um, of different uh, fragrances, uh, little wax melts, a tea light. And we put in little like uh, brochure, um, 
about uh, realtor packs, oh, like yeah, a yeah. three pack gift pack, like a closing gift, right? So we made like 40 of them, right? And we we got um, about, I don't know, 30, 10 ounce, the large uh, Malibu coffee shop. And um, we put the little welcome home uh, label on it, wrapped them up. And we just guerrilla marketed. We drove around. I looked up on the Google Maps, all these different real That's estate, cool. yeah, <laughs> real estate agents uh, locations, and we just straight up walked in. We just said, "Hey, how's it going? Um, you don't know us, but we well, we, uh, have we have a candle business. Sets. We offer closing gifts. We have a link on our website." Um, they would smell the candle and we'd be like, that's yours. Like that candle's for you. Um, you can put it on the counter or enjoy the scent. And then here are samples for, we give them like five packs, six packs for all the other agents. So you can think about it as if obviously that's a form of marketing, but you yeah. can think about giving candles away for free as a form of marketing. Obviously you want to try to be a, you know, strategic about it and not just be like, you get a candle, you get a candle, everybody gets a candle. And we, uh -huh. we probably hit up like <laughs> but, 15 spots, right? And like four months go by and we haven't heard us uh, nothing. We know nope. we got yeah. well, you know, we did. We did get one. We got one. Yeah, we did get one. And we did and, get one recently too. But our name is out there. They remember it. They so love like, the way they smell. They have our information. So, and maybe that one day comes where they remember and we, you earn and a you, customer and, and they remember us walking in with the initiative and they go, dang, okay. And you never know what's going to happen in situations where you put yourself out there. Cause that, it can be the most. One guy emailed you and he goes, oh, you guys, you came into the, to the business today and you told us about your business. I brought that candle home. My wife loves it. Yeah. He gave it to his wife. Yeah. Like, and that was cool to hear. That was, that was super cool to hear. So somebody said, don't forget to ask for the sale. And yeah, I mean, that's true. But I guess in the situation of us going in, we didn't want to be somebody just going in and being say like, no soliciting. yeah, yeah they so, don't want it, and there so were a couple people, gift. there were a couple people we're that were like, Hey, role. you know, if you're soliciting, we're like, no, we're just yeah. dropping off marketing materials, introducing ourselves, talking to them for giving a little you guys bit, free samples, giving samples, free samples with information. Yeah, we're not here so, to sell you anything. So I understand like the process of like when you're really trying to sell and go yeah. in there, but we didn't want to go yeah. into their space because I worked front desk for six years and I hated it when people would just walk in and you're stuck behind the front desk and you're being sold to. So we just wanted to go about it a, a little bit different way. Um, our markets profitable. Yeah. Uh, it just depends on the kind of market that you're attending. Um, and obviously how much you make versus and, how much you paid for the event. And there are many markets we do where mm -hmm. there's other, uh, candle. Oh yeah. yeah. We've, we've done so a market before where there's like, that. So like five or six there's other times where makers. we're here. There's a, there's a candle oh, yeah, there's... person over here and right across from us the, is a candle person. Yeah, the... And then there's a, uh, a tarot car reader who's selling candles. Yeah. Or like and, people that they have like a lot of businesses and, that and aren't candles. They'll have the candles as like their little separate side thing. Yeah. And there's, um, there, and everyone does well. Sometimes um, the night's slow and there's not a lot of foot traffic. One time we got lucky. We had a lot of returning customers one night. And there were multiple candle um, market or people at the market. Oh, we got. And, yeah. and we felt bad because a lot of them at the end of the night were like, oh, this oh, one was slow. And yeah. how'd you guys do? And it was rough for us. And oh, I felt so and, bad. And I was like, I was like, dang, our returning customers really saved us. Yeah. We had a good night. We had a good night. But there was like four other candle. Um, yeah, but it was vendors. a really, really slow it was event. Very slow. I mean, I think, I think the, they closed early, half the, hour early. Yeah, the yeah. people next to us, they didn't sell anything. And I felt so but, bad. But even if it's a slow night, handing out the card, saying hi to people, mm -hmm. um, just having them, asking them to smell the candles just to see their reaction. Um, it's better than staying home doing nothing. Yeah, you know? that's yeah. Just getting yourself out there, and the more you do it, the more comfortable um, you become with people. Because constantly standing there waiting for someone to walk by, and then to be like, "Oh hi," and hear a no, or 
uh, don't look at me, don't make eye contact, people just walking by. Yeah. It, it kind of weighs on you it, a little bit. It does. But as soon but as the you. The more you do it, yeah. and as soon as you and get. And as soon as you like, get somebody that comes in and is interested, you get a sale. It's like this little, like, boost. But not even a sale right away. We did but it where an hour somebody... went by, we got no sale. But oh, we had so like... many, like, fun <laughs> conversations with people. Yeah. Like, people were snowing them, seeing the reaction on, like, Saturday morning cartoons or Sunday brunch or something. That didn't mean they bought anything, but it it helps the time go by and it's better than a no and it's better than a oh don't make eye contact with me let me just walk by really quick you know <laughs> literally there was a super slow night and i don't know if it was that night or a different night you know it might have been um the one in corona that we only did one time um but uh it, it was so slow it was like the last 45 minutes of the night and Chris was bound and determined to like. Oh get yeah! It. And I so we this. have like we have like yeah. the little light up yeah. box. It's like a little light box, and it says "Free Candle Smells." Yeah. And we had it like we started that a couple years ago, and then we took it down, and then we brought it back out again. Yeah. And Chris literally just like grabbed, I grabbed it. it. I, and, I was I was pointing at people. Like, I was out in front of the booth. I was like, "Hey, how you doing? Hey, you know, free candle smells." You know, I had I had uh, two girls standing across from me and uh head in my hand and they made eye contact and with you're me. just like and then i pointed to them and she and she, they and immediately they laughed over. and they ended up coming over and they smelling some stuff. candles and they bought a candle yeah i was like no way that just worked yeah so sometimes i mean having those are fun times yeah trust me having him there that is like kind of yeah, more of that out of the box salesy kind of person i'll be loud and i i mean there was a time a guy was just walking by and i looked at him and i just and said he, hey i was like you want to smell yeah. some candles? And he's like, okay. He's like, sure. And he comes and smells it. And he's like, I want this one. Wow, I want it. <laughs> and I, and we looked at each other like, like he okay. doesn't look like he likes candles. Yeah. <laughs> he he looked like a guy you didn't want to mess with. And sure enough, he liked the candle and he got one. Yeah. And you'll hear 100 no's before you hear a yes sometimes. Yeah. So definitely being okay with. Yeah okay and getting comfortable Re with it i mean and chris has seen rejection me, and chris has seen me before get super defeated like really early on because i'm like she'll get defeated by the wind <laughs> we'll be setting up it'll be so windy and hot oh man and it's she's the worst. like she is ready to leave it's the and worst then two hours and i feel into so it. bad because i'm like i don't want to have a bad attitude and i'll like switch I'll, I'll switch it but it's two hours later the wind calms down the sun's going down the market's yeah. going. Actually, one the of music's our music's on. She's like, it's not it's that actually, bad. It's not that. It's, it's, not not that bad. Bad. it's really fun. <laughs> but you guys know, I made a video talking about how I really feel about vendor yeah. events, and just like, uh, so Bunny said, markets are so socially draining, introvert to introvert. But yeah. once you grease up the wheels and make a sale, it gets easier to walk through small talk and uncomfortable interactions. Yeah, it definitely. Yeah. And the more you do it, because I remember the first market we ever did, I'm like, the more you do it, the easier it gets. I was so nervous, mm -hmm. so nervous. And then it ended up being really fun. And then you realize that it's literally just as if you have your own storefront that people are coming into and you're just getting to talk to them about products that you make. And yeah. don't go into it um, like um, like you're just selling to a stranger. Go into it with a kind of a I don't care attitude, a, hey, you want to come check these out or you guys want to smell some of these candles? They're handmade or, uh, hey, I want to see your reaction with this candle. A lot of people like it. Yeah. Or or if what I've done is I'll see someone walking by with a drink and I'll be like, hey, is that coffee? And sure enough, it's not, it's beer. But I'll say, <laughs> like, you know, oh, well. is that, we have a really good coffee scent, <laughs> you know? Don't have and, a beer scent. And who cares what their response is? Yeah. The Good, fact that you're approaching them shows that you're not afraid to talk to them. You're personable. You're inviting. And it's more about, hey, check this out instead of, hey, will you buy this candle that I made? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's more, it's not about the sales, the last thing on your mind. The main thing is getting your name out there, handing and them a card. Engaging saying, with people, getting yeah. to talk to them, getting yeah. to, and we, a lot of the times, will just talk a lot about. I know, was nervous. The first time I was afraid to say anything wrong. They were asking what kind of wax I use. Oh, I start yeah. throwing out numbers and codes and no, two thirty. Yeah, it was and she cute goes, that, just say it's a it's uh, soy. It's a soy. Yeah, like, it was oh, cute. Okay. They yeah. They I was they, somebody <laughs> was asking about what kind of wax we use for wax melts and <laughs> yeah, he said TW thirty. Or yeah, it's a soy ten beeswax. Yeah, blend, and you're like, like no, that. just say soy. <laughs> yeah, I was, was too, too much information. But I've learned. I've learned. 
but it was scary at first very scary um so i mean i was even nervous and i worked front desk for forever and of course i had to i worked in kind of like sales too as well with my front desk job so the kind of sales that i did with that job i had to switch how i did it because it did not really translate as well denise she's got bowls of uh, individually wrapped candies for the kids when they come up okay so <laughs> <laughs> we had a wheel <laughs> we had a wheel that you could spin and man oh. we had a line of kids we had a kid we had we stickers had, we had a bunch of stuff uh okay we had on one on there win a free candle large candle the first guy <laughs> that came up he spun that wheel he won a free candle and we're like he didn't buy anything he was there for maybe three minutes he was like okay which one didn't seem interested at all he's like cool walked away and eric gives me erica gives me this look of like that really we need to take this wheel down and i just said i said it's a fluke don't worry it it, it will that happens I mean, this guy yeah. walked up, I think it was even like 10 minutes before opening, like before you start. Yeah. It's like, we were still yeah. kind of setting up. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, I want to spin the wheel, you know? And we have to honor it. I'm not going to fight with a guy and be like, and, no, you don't get like, this. No, they, you get it. You why get why it. Why did they do yeah. that? Like, it, I, it's and, pleasing the customer. It's like, hey, if you oh, want well, this, of course. here you go. I'm not going to say no. And also that goes back to the whole giving away something for free. And, yeah. And who knows if he bought but it. But I mean, it, we don't know. in that situation, I, be- I believe it was be- while we were setting up, it was before the event even started. Mm-hmm. He he wasn't even like, it, he didn't even like smell candles and was like going to wanting to purchase one. It was just like, oh, you have a wheel. What do you got? Oh, you know, what? I'm going to spin it, you know? And then he's like, okay, well, can't, I'll, I'll take this candle. <laughs> And it was just like, oh man! It was just not. I was like, well, that yeah, that wasn't at all yeah what I was looking to yeah. To but then one time we had like nine like kids at the booth blocking everybody, oh my gosh, and it was yes. like, oh man, this is rough. Like we can't even get sales and talk to the parents because we got kids wanting to do the wheel and get stickers and yeah. I mean, our um, very first market we did was Halloween, so. <laughs> That we was, had a bag of candy. We had a huge and Denise, bag of candy. That helped a lot because yeah. it, it would it would be that kind of icebreaker because the parents would bring their kids that are dressed up, make the kids say, hey, trick or treat. We'd and, give them candy. And then that would give us that little edge of like, hi, how are you? And Well, um, last last Halloween, um, we so we were right across the way from another candle vendor. Eat so much to the point where I would see people point at them and point at us, smiling like, "Oh, look! It's like the same thing across yeah, the way." Why would they and we're do like, that? Yeah. Um, so what we what we did, and there was like a long line in between, like in front of our booth for some. It sort was a of, face painting thing. Is that what it was? So like, we're here, they're across from us, but the face paintings that way, and the line formed and divided all the booths. And yeah, I mean, we don't have control over where we're we're set up we get a designated spot it's maybe it's randomly generated i don't know it's really on the um shoulders of the person the running the event mm-hmm. yeah so. uh, and most of the time they try to do their best to not have the same kind of vendors right next to each other but yeah. sometimes things happen but uh there was a huge line of people in front of us and kids would walk up and get candy and we would basically give the kids candy and we would be like and business cards for the adults and if you want to smell candles because we just found that so much of it was just about the candy. So we were trying to really tailor it back to the actual business. Yeah. Christmas market candy canes work. Yeah, definitely. And if it's Christmas, your fall scents, bring out your fall scents, but also have your, all your long scents. Um, I've had customers come to us from having issues with other vendor candles who swears by using only essential oils in her products. She loves our products and ended up buying over $150 worth wow. of products. Yeah. That's there, awesome. There's definitely a, a different market. I would say for people that are looking for essential oils and trust me, I, when I first got into, um, uh, the business of candle making, I was really looking into it. I'm sure we may have all looked into this was what is the purest, best, healthiest quality candle that I can make. And I think it was like beeswax with essential oils. But even then I know that essential oils, you have to be very careful with when it's just essential oils and it can be very expensive because 
um, essential oils can be very expensive. And Tyrone says, how much of your personal story should be part of your marketing of your cannabis? Oh, I love this question. So that is completely up to you and what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. you, you don't even have to have a story, you know? Um, that's personal. You, you, that That is up to you completely. True. You know? I will say, um, and I have a... A uh, video, a recent video that I did talking about this, I would say that uh, storytelling within um, within your brand of your business uh, is a huge way to market your business. Um, but that doesn't mean that it has to be personal, personal. So some people have stories behind their business that's not really personal to them. So let's say you're um, making candles and you have a connection to like a cause of some kind. Um, let's say like animal rescue or something like that. And that's part of the storyline of your brand. That's not personal, personal to you. Um, obviously. But it with, might be. Yeah, You might it, work for that rescue. Yeah, it might be. Um, so it comes down at your discretion. What you feel comfortable um, with. Yeah. I'm not saying for everybody to go out there and make up a story just to have a story. No, Try to be but, authentic with yourself. and and. But definitely yeah. nowadays, like with small businesses, people like seeing the behind the scenes. I mean, there's been so many people at markets that even have looked us up like returning customers that have you know obviously followed us on instagram and they see that i post more than just product stuff like i'm posting about life you know with the pregnancy announcement with us getting married with just more personal stuff that i felt you know comfortable being able to share and of course with the youtube channel of just sharing the whole process of getting started with a candle business and everything that we've had returning customers say that they really like that aspect to it and it does you know make people feel a little bit more connected to you as the individual business owner yeah gosh i'm thirsty uh atomic atomic elf am i seeing that right yeah i think so that's bags with your business name logo yeah definitely oh yeah i would love to do that i think i think that's hard too is um is knowing how much money to put into yeah, how far things. are you like, willing to go yeah like for instance um, i would love to get customized boxes for all of the different scents but man that would be expensive yeah and for something that we only do generally october to halloween to mother's day for vendor events you know because with i don't see us really we never put our candles in those boxes when we're shipping them out from online orders you know what I mean? Which box? The white box? The white boxes, the ones that we use for the vendor events. Mm -hmm. You know, is that the type of box you're talking about? Yeah, like yeah. boxes that would be a customized box yeah. for for the size and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, our wick trimmers have our name on it. That's yeah, pretty sweet. that was cool. Yeah, I mean, we're not handing out pens with the company name on it. I don't know. That, that's kind of cool. Um, I guess we're official when we have a pen with our name on it. I know, right? We should do that. <laughs> um, uh, let me see. Diana. Diana, Diana? No, she... Did you mean plural? No, she said she was going to try to get her question asked another time, but I don't I don't see any questions at all from her. I apologize. Um, yeah, go up, go up to the top. Let's try to find it. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, I'm sorry. I know that it gets disappointing when your question isn't answered, but it's really not um, on on purpose or anything. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see any questions at all. Um, here, let, me, let me grab. So, any advice on getting a good hot throw from Soy Ten? It's Diana Brown. Um, Is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, let me look for that while you answer that okay. question. Um, any advice on getting a good hot throw from Soy 10? So uh, I had found working with this wax, you want to work hot. Um, so I know that with a lot of soy waxes, like a 464 or something like that, um, a lot of times people will work really cool with that wax. Um, I personally like to work really hot with Soy 10. So like heat it up 195, 200 degrees. Uh, make sure you're pouring in the fragrance oil at a hot temperature. So between like 185 to 190, because as soon as you pour in that fragrance oil, it cools down the temperature really quickly. You're stirring it. Um, I also pour really hot with soy tan as well. So uh, we pour pretty much immediately after stirring. 
Um, I don't really know the temperature at which we pour because again, that's not something that I um, pay attention to that I'm, you know, really set on. It has to be a certain pour temperature, um, but definitely working really hot with the wax. I think I tried, I think it's called the Alex method. I think I tried that in the very beginning. Um, and uh, I, um, oh, there it is. You're talking about hot throw? Yeah, hot throw. Um, okay, Diana, we found you. If you're still here with us, I appreciate it. Um, have you ever worked with, with GV415? If so, do you have any suggestions on what, what I, I can, can add, add to it so I can pour at a hotter temp? Currently have to pour 90 to 100. Uh, I, I'm so sorry. I don't have... Um, I don't have experience with that wax. I believe that it's kind of 415. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Golden brands 415. It's kind of like 464. Okay. Um, it's another soy wax. What would you um, pour that at? Cause it's saying, uh, have to pour 90 to hundred. Is that temperature? Is, yeah. Is that temperature. Celsius or Fahrenheit? That's really cold. Yeah. That's really, really cold. Yeah. Cause we're pouring it like 195. Um, yeah. I'm wondering if that's maybe Celsius. I'm not sure. Okay, um, so do the calculator. Ninety is, degrees Celsius. Celsius. Converted um, to Fahrenheit. I know. I I know it can be confusing when there's the when there's different uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit. So let me see what. Ninety. Thirty-two degrees is zero. Okay. Well, ninety when, ninety degrees Celsius, Celsius is, is one ninety four Fahrenheit. Okay. Or that's 212. A, and 212. I, I, I've poured it 205. But if that's if that's Fahrenheit, that's really, really cool. But I don't even know if like the wax would even still be melted at that point. Um, but I yeah, guess but if that's if that's yeah, if that's Fahrenheit or 90 to 100, if that's Fahrenheit, the wax won't even be melted at that point. Yeah. But if that if that's Celsius, then, then it's hot. Then hot, then you're on the right track. Yeah. Add to yeah. I'm so sorry. I I don't have um, I don't have a lot of uh, experience with that wax. Um, so I know that with a lot of times with with mm. waxes like 100% soy wax, even with 464, I know a lot of people. Um, I I know a lot of people that choose to wait to pour until about 140 145 degrees. I know other people that pour hot with 464. That wax is definitely something that a lot of people have varying opinions on um yeah sorry we didn't see that i mean let me see so tyrone lives in houston texas um okay. and he's talking about hot climates uh for shipping so they do make a um like a tin metal uh wrap that you can like an insulator um, that you can ship your candle in. Mm -hmm. I would definitely go for um, a thicker ply of box versus like a thin poly mailer bag or even a um, like a padded flat rate. I'd go with a thicker box to help mm -hmm. with, with that side of things. Um, and then the time of week that you ship, um, depending on how far away that client uh, customer is um, and seeing the destination, if it's gonna arrive on a Sunday, uh, you don't want to sit in the mailbox all Sunday long or, you know, on a Saturday or, um, to Monday. You just want to try to eliminate it sip, uh, sitting on a van or on a plane or in a warehouse over the weekend. Yeah. And of course, some people don't ship on the weekend for that reason. They yeah. only ship well, Monday Especially through... if you know it's going to be really hot. Yeah. <laughs> like we're probably going to have to put out a notice really soon because it's yeah. this next weekend. Is gonna get really hot, so we gotta we gotta be able to make yeah. notice of that. Um, but yeah, so I, I think there are like little packs, like insulator packs. Mm -hmm. I don't know how expensive they are. Um, I think you could probably look on Amazon, but I think Uline. Um, you Tammy like asked about uh, seeing a profit. How long after we started? You you know everything that. I believe that was made off the candle went right back into the candle business. There wasn't really any, um, like, so, so the way that I break it down when it comes to a profit is you want to make sure. So there is kind of your overall profit, um, within the year. So like how much you're spending on supplies versus how much you're making in your business, obviously that is going to be, um, either a net profit or a net loss. 
Um, but the most important thing when you're getting started is to make sure that you're getting a profit on the individual products that you're making so that you're having a really good profit margin on what you're selling, because in the long term, that's really what's going to create an overall profit. Um, but still, I mean, still, I think even now, I think the last time uh, for 2022, when I was going over everything, I mean, if it wasn't for other streams of income, I mean, we would be spending more money on supplies than we would on the actual business. Um, yeah, and because that's she worked. And then she did her side, um, what was it, eBay, eBay? clothing, mm -hmm. right? And I had a full-time job and a part-time job. And there was really just constant hustle of how we're going to do it. And one day she was like, hey, I'm going to do this. And I was like, okay, cool you know, <laughs> sweet, go for it. And then Why I was, not? you know, documenting on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. So it all kind of like came together, but YouTube is just, instead of me working at a desk job somewhere at my old job, that's kind of taking the place of that. Yeah. Um, but the, but the, the, eBay, the eBay business is what allowed you yes, to because dabble I was able, in the candle mm -hmm, because you because were, I was able to use that you were money making money from there yeah. while you had a job and working then at, and then any money that I was making from the candle business is investing back, into, back it, into the business which is which is always yeah. my recommendation to anybody getting started is to invest back into your business because that's really what's going to help you grow with your business um is to be able to put that money right back into it yeah. um and you're going to find I mean Last was it last year? I can't remember. We spent like four thousand dollars on wax. So and that was a huge. Yeah. You know that was huge. We felt that. We felt that. But, <laughs> Definitely. But, but we. But it's lasted now, us. And but now, it's lasted us. And, and, and now, we're benefiting exactly. from it. It made it cheaper over time, and we still have a good amount. Yeah. And, so it's that hard. It's yeah. that hard process of wanting to buy things in bulk, having the storage space to be able to hold that, having the money to buy things in bulk. To be yeah. able to really take down that profit margin and little yeah. by little, you can really work at it to be able to do that. Um, but it's something that we're still, you know, trying yeah, to figure and out. We don't, we don't have this giant profit of funds every year. I no. mean, we, we basically um, are able to just continue the business. <laughs> $4,000. I know. I know. Trust me. I know. It was, it was a hit. It was a yeah, hit. it was my money too that you took. No, I'm just yeah. <laughs> no, it was a business. Mm. But I had to pay to rent the U-Haul. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I had that. to move all those boxes by myself. Yeah, I had to load everything, unload yes, everything. I was telling the forklift guy what to do. <laughs> there was some more up top. It's something right here. So Atomic's like, was that GW four sixteen, not GB four sixteen? I don't know. Me personally, I don't really. Know. Oh, possibly. I'm to be honest. I'm not uh, well versed in the. I think it's either Golden Brands or Golden Wax or I don't know. I just know four six four. I know four fifteen. I know there's a four. Do you know triple four? Uh, I know Ms. that there, Tabitha, I know there is a four four four. He's talking um, about four four four. Yeah, you know, uh, Jeff Wade. Uh, those are the guys specifically Wade. I know that he has done a lot of testing on a bunch of different waxes. They're like way more well-versed in uh, a bunch of different, uh, waxes. I just know the wax really well that, uh, you know, soy 10 that, that we work with. Um, yeah, we, so, we test more fragrances than we do different waxes Yes, because we have our base. We know what mm -hmm. we like and what works with the candle line. And if we want to continue it and be profitable, we want to reduce the amount of time that we're spending on making the candle. Because imagine if I had to empty out one of these tanks to throw in, you know, oh, yeah. some other type of wax yeah. to make this other blend of candle. We yeah. kind of like to keep it all uniform. Yeah. But even the testing process, like you guys yeah. know, it's it's a long process. There's a lot that's involved in the testing process. And I don't want to say that I'm lazy, but like sometimes I am a little lazy with it. <laughs> like sometimes it's like the thought process of like going into all that when there's like so much other things like the new candle line and all that stuff. Like with my YouTube channel, it's so much you, easier for me to document. You've been lazy, but you're growing a baby. I know. So you got to take that into account. 
I know. You know. So. And that's another thing that comes into play. Like even right now, I'm like, oh my back, I'm getting hungry. Like. Yeah, I don't. I, sometimes I don't even want to hear it. I kick her out of the <laughs> no. candle shop and I just say, get out of my office, and I just go, I just work. Oh man. So. Um. But you know, I've always said over the years, like. <laughs> I've always said over the years, you know, like, oh, just I listening to her get out of bed sounds exhausting. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it's hard. I'm like just breathing. It's, sometimes it's a when first I'm, experience for both of us, so we're just enjoying it, having fun with it. When I'm eating, I'll just have to take a moment and like do some deep breaths. He's like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just breathing, but I'm also just trying to see like how much more room I have in my stomach." <laughs> Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh. oh man. So, but go. I know. You want to go back up? Go up, go up. I thought there was a good amount because I remember when I was looking for Diana's comment. I was like, oh, I saw some. I was like, oh, we skip these too. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm late. Hello from what's WV? Uh, WV. What's WV? That's not Washington. Washington is no. W A. And what's what's well, Wyoming? W Y. W Y. I think I am not good at the acronyms on different states, and it, it may not even be a state. Um, hello, welcome. Uh, West Virginia. Oh, what, she, everybody, West Virginia. West Virginia. <laughs> we just have to scroll down. There it is. Oh man! Of course, I knew that. <laughs> I knew oh. that. <laughs> Everybody's just ripping us apart. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, this is fun. I just sticker wicks, people. It's all I do. It's hey, all... you know, this may be easy. Like, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to make it seem like, oh, this may be easier for making videos for us doing lives. But honestly, like, you guys, with filming and getting everything set up, and also I have very, very sensitive eyes. Um, so I go through like ocular migraines, which I've been going through over the past couple days. Um, that it can be you know, kind of challenging, but doing this, if you guys like hanging out with us, we should do this more often. Let's see. Oh, that's some nice comments. Hi, Ruby. Ruby has been a top commenter for a long time. Very Let cool. Let's see. Um, how long did it take you to get your work area set up to be functional? Oh, I did it all in a day. When we had to shift everything from the yeah, um, he, the we, dining, we had everything in the dining room and living room, and um, we just we the time was come where we had to transition everything. So, man, it took it took a day. I, I so it was yeah. still it was still I think first trimester for me, and I had told him, you know, because we knew that we wanted to do that. That was something like we. Actually, I think originally when we were thinking about, you know, where to have like the baby stuff in the room and all that kind of stuff. And then Just I was the like, the room isn't big enough um, for all that stuff. We the baby really, stuff or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With, with Brody's crate. Yeah. With the bed. Yeah. Right. With the dresser. Me, I didn't even have a dresser. Yeah. With the space we had in the closet. It just, and then to add a bassinet, add a, um, a pack and play as a crib. You but, know what I mean? Yeah, but then we also were thinking about, like, for me, I kind of went into just, like, I don't want to have all the candle stuff yeah, out. Like, out and about. Because then yeah. it's, like, when we're out there, I don't know. I just, I wanted everything no, to be put we away. more space because we didn't, we don't want and the baby is... just subjected to the bedroom because of all the candle supplies. So yeah. we, did, we did the shift. Um, and, yeah, we... <laughs> It came down to... We, we did. Do you remember we tried to draw it out? <laughs> <laughs> we did the layout. Yeah. That we didn't wanted. work out. That was terrible. And I'm terrible. I could never yeah. be like a... What, you just got to look at it like one thing at a time. You know, if you have all these walls and um, you have all these racks, just one rack at a time. It's and seeing what's going to work and rack, what's going to fit. Decoderization, figuring out the room. When this room was empty, it was looking like, hmm. Yeah. What would go where? It was yeah. literally like that. It was like, okay, if this is here, this is here. I'm not 100% satisfied with this setup, but it needed to be done. And 
and we I, needed to be able to sleep in the bed at night. Yeah, uh, and I night, and I was so, so I just had to do it. I was so over smelling all of the fragrances. Like for me in the first trimester, the kitchen was just the worst place yeah. in the world. Yeah. Um, but having and the fragrances, they didn't bother me as much as food did. Um, but they still, it still got to the point where I'm like, we need to do this like sooner than later. I would appreciate so that everything could be in here. Yeah. Um, yep. Tyrone said, are you in a two bedroom place? No. I wish. No, we're not 700 <laughs> we, square foot. We're in uh, a studio with a bedroom converted into a workshop. Yeah. So we got our bed in the living room, yep. our kitchens in there. We got the dining room table. Yeah. Um, and before we didn't, little... before the dining room table. Um, it's a little round pub table with four chairs, nothing big, nothing fancy. That was down in the garage. We have a detached garage. Detached. Mm -hmm. Yeah, garage. luckily we have we do have a small one car garage yeah. that but comes with the apartment. When we were like, okay, we're gonna transition, we we're like, oh, we can bring that dining room table up. So we did that. And yeah, it's 700 square foot. We have uh, one bathroom, one bedroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we even have a spin bike in the apartment too. Somehow we managed to fit that in here. Um, yeah. So you know, being able to make use of this small space that we have is something that has been a challenge. But I think that it just goes to <laughs> show. Redecorating from baby marks. Yeah, I think it just goes to show that like you can make marks. things work. You know, yeah. like if you feel like oh, you only have a small space, like. Just know that you can make things work and like you can yeah, and fit over time, so much more. I made adjustments. Yeah. Over time, tweaking your work area. You, you're you going to do that forever. You're always going to do it. Uh, who, you know, grew up changing their bedroom around constantly or who moved a lot. I moved every year and a half to two years growing up, always moving. And you do, you, you find out something works. Sometimes you get bored of it and you want to change it up. Um, but I constantly am tweaking things all the time to make space. Uh, sometimes you have to just, you realize that's been sitting there and you haven't touched it in like four months. You're like, why do I have it there? Yeah. What are we using that for? Why is it space is money. Time is money in a sense, if you're thinking about it business wise. So you're like, Hmm, if I get rid of that, or if I move that somewhere else, I can better utilize that space. So yeah, fine tuning, always tweaking, always uh, evolving your work area. It's something that we always have to do. Yeah. 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 So we do the best with what we have, you know, and we, uh, I think it was one of our last markets we did the lady next to us. Hi, uh, Dr. Kimberly. Kimberly C says hi. Oh, hi. What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, do you remember the, the soap lady and the bath bomb lady that was next to us? And she was like, man, we got a, we got a three bedroom house plus a workshop. Plus, and she was like, and I still feel like I don't have enough space. And we were telling them about our little apartment and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And well, believe me, if you had that, you'd be like, I don't have enough space. Oh, yeah. Because you Cause tend you, to use what you yeah, have. You and then use you, what you have. And then you feel like, everyone, you know, it's never yeah. enough. You're, you're wanting to get more space. And yeah. obviously, this is not like, you know, the, the end way. goal. But with us being in California, you know, and wanting to be near family, especially at this time in our lives, it's just kind of like a little sacrifice that we're willing to make to be able to, you know, like be around family at this, yeah. this time in our lives. And I've, I've been told by so many people that our space is going to be just fine, that we're going to do okay, you know, yeah. with, with having a baby and everything. <laughs> I feel like obviously there's definitely going to be challenges, but you know. Yeah, I'll make it work. Let's see. All right. I'm, I'm done uh, doing all those uh, wicks. Doing all those wicks. Yeah, there. it set me up that way. Uh, save me some time mm -hmm. when I go to cut those tins. Let's see. As a newbie candle maker, I feel like I've hit the lottery by getting the chance to chat with you guys right now because I followed you, Black Type Barn and Stanley, religiously. Aw, very cool. Yeah, no, we love just, I mean, this has been fun. Obviously, it's his first time doing live. I typically don't do lives um, because I always just, I don't know. It took me a while to get comfortable with it, but now it's like, you know, it's cool. Thanks, Kate. Yeah, you just got to make it work. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, just make it work. <laughs> my spin bike yeah, is a laundry. <laughs> we do that all the time. Yeah, it's a co-hanger. 
yes. And I thought there my jackets on there Yeah. <laughs> until I'm ready to use it. And then I just throw it off. But I will say with the space that we have out there, getting to move everything in here, um, I'm definitely somebody who has a lot of stuff um, and a lot of stuff everywhere. But for the most part, having a small space, it's less space to have a lot of stuff. So it kind of kind of helps me. Dr. Kimberly says, and did you already answer this? Mm -mm. I don't know. So uh, Dr. Kimberly says, do you have a hard time choosing the color and sizes of your vessels that you want to use? Um, it's a dilemma because uh, everyone's using, you know, there's always that trend, you know, that hype train of, of vessels, right? And um, the best way, if everyone's say using black or, or clear or white is to really try to make a personalized label. Um, there's some vessels that you can't even put a label on it. Yeah. You remember like that, those edges, those, those rough edges mm -hmm. on, on some of those, you can't even put a label on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it wasn't, I don't remember having a hard time. It was like, it's just, we just were true to what we liked. Um, yeah. she liked I, the black and, yeah. um, I kind of fell in love with that. But then I we get some it. clear ones by accident. We picked up a case with our order of black vessels. Uh -huh. We got a clear, a clear and we opened them up and we actually were like, yeah, you know what? These aren't too bad. So we, we tried them out, but just be honest with yourself with what you like. doesn't matter what everyone else is doing. It's just like if you're going to start a candle business, don't let, because everyone else is doing it, deter you from doing Oh, and that's a huge thing it. too. It's, it's like, huge. It's you know, like, oh, there's so many people that are it. doing it. Is there so even they're not you. They're not your ideas. They're not your style or your lights. You never know. You might have some similarities. There's a friend of ours that's a candle maker, and we we see her fragrances, and we like a lot of them, and we actually have some of the same ones. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't stop us from using them, or yeah. or uh, even the the vessel. You know. Yeah. Um, it's just finding out what you like, and and I would also. Uh, throw this question at you of identifying who your customer is and then being able to make a product around that. That that will help you out as well. Mm. Oh, sorry. I'm getting tired. <laughs> I held my yawn back. It's contagious. <laughs> yep. I know I was trying not to when I was talking, but yeah, figuring out your customer base, figuring out that, and that may help you be able to decide. And I know there's so many different things that come into play, but think about it this way. Think about what you have access to. What is the closest supplier to you? Think about cost of goods. I feel like cost of goods is a huge part of it that you want to make sure that you can keep the cost low and you're not just trying to, you know, uh, splurge on these certain kind of vessels because you think that it's going to make you the most money or you think that it's going to make you stand out the most. Um, sometimes there's things that can make people stand out that is not about the look of their vessels. It's not about the color. It's not about the size, the shape. It can be about the story. It can be about the way that they choose to market their business. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that can make you stand out. That's not just, you know, the, the way or the type of vessel that you use that definitely can be obviously a big part of it but yeah shows become life yeah and oh and ikea too yeah no definitely you you end up basically shaping your whole living situation around um your product and what you're doing because not everybody can afford a brick and mortar or a, a, a small um enclosed office that has a warehouse from behind you know God, that'd be amazing we always yeah, talk about so that. Like just, if we had a warehouse just, with yeah. like, you know, <laughs> oh, this oh whole, my gosh. This whole, her whole journey started in the kitchen. Yeah. The, the kitchen then, counter. And then finally when I got out of the kitchen, <laughs> I felt like a red across the whole apartment. <laughs> into Sending the garage. Me to Lowe's. It sent me to Lowe's. Get some more racks. Do this. And then I thought, oh, this, she don't know what she's but, doing. I got to, I got to live in this. Okay, oh, with the racks. We're going to make and it organized. All that, yeah. And, yeah. Because uh, yeah. for me, I would just, I Man. wouldn't utilize the racks to the point, you know, where they could be utilized. And he really utilizes them to like the whole, the whole, uh, you know, as much as he can, like really, really utilizes them. Um, yeah, all your work, your stuff, storage, from the Ikea. Not everything's Ikea though. Yeah. 
Um, we go to we go to Lowe's. We get some uh, the seven tier racks. Uh, so this this steel this is from Uline. This from Uline. But I think a lot of our stuff's from Uline. Um, like our shipping boxes, right? Yeah, the table that we have over there that's from that's IKEA, from IKEA. That holds the computer, all that um, kind of stuff. Yeah. So we did. 50, I mean, 50 maybe. That was really fun. Like the first whatever time is that we cheapest were, that or we less were. expensive. Yeah. yeah. Although I wouldn't say Uline is less expensive. No, but that is an important. This yeah, table so. is very important because of how heavy these tanks are like, and safety. Yeah. You know. So um, I want to make sure I got a really good heavy yeah, one. Yeah. 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 So definitely. Um, yeah, we have a three bedroom <laughs> house and all of our candle stuff is everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Let's see. It's been two hours, guys. You need a rest. Really? It's been two hours? It has been two no hours. No way. Yeah. It goes by so fast. Yeah, I've been doing tabs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to look like I'm doing something because I don't, I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about. This is her show. I'm just here. I'm just invited. I'm a guest. I'm no, a guest speaker. No, you are 50% of this now. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I swear there's, it's like halfway through the day. I'm like, if, if I have to sit up, like even for the market tomorrow, I'm all nervous. Cause I'm like, I won't be able to lay down halfway through the day. That's the thing yeah. is like, it's the laying down. It's yeah. like sitting up constantly. Um, but her sister can always drive over if she's able to and pick her up and they can go get food or go relax. Um, and I can just be there. Um, maybe I'll just grab a kid out of the crowd and said, Hey, you know, come work with me. <laughs> just no. tell give you a candle come here and sell this no <laughs> talk to people. no i want to be able to i want to be able to stay the whole time i just yeah and i know it's gonna be a fun event too like there's fireworks and all that kind of stuff yeah. so i know it's gonna be fun yeah um, and then whatever uh we have left over um it's going to inventory mm -hmm. so uh for the uh website yeah. yeah so that's gonna save a little bit of time on making production you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because i'm jumping back and forth between the shop and working at home so yeah yeah, yeah. okay you want to wrap things up anything else you want to well how do you feel are you tired yeah okay good plan thanks ruby <laughs> and hello from oklahoma hello I want to make sure I say hi to you guys. Thank you so much for. Uh, Erica needs a foot massage. That's that's my. I need a back massage. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Same. Oh. Thank you for but, joining us, guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, you guys, for hanging out with us. I feel like we should do this more often if you guys enjoyed. Um, obviously, with these topics, like yeah. maybe. And if we miss questions, sorry. I mean, yeah. I'm. It's hard to pay attention to the comments and you know talking and. Doing stuff. Choosing the ones yeah. that are good, you know, topics to yeah. talk about and everything. Um, maybe we can, I don't know. I like QA styles because it's kind of like just go with the flow of talking about things, but maybe we could have a topic, you know, every now and then that we talk about certain things. Um yeah. but uh how are you different and what types of scents you enjoy? You know, we actually we actually like the same sense. I would say that the majority of the time we like this. Yeah, majority practices. of the time. But yeah. there are a few that um, I won't like that she likes or mm -hmm. vice versa. Yeah. yeah. But for the most part, I would say that we yeah. we actually we actually like the same kind of sense. Yeah. Um, but uh, thanks so much for hanging out with us, you guys. I know that I know that um, for those of you that are on the East Coast, I know it's like, isn't it your bedtime? It's like 10 o'clock. <laughs> time to go to sleep. I feel like it's my bedtime right now. It's only seven. Oh, it's seven? Yeah, it's seven, honey. Oh, wow. I got gnats everywhere. It's like gnat season. Really? Yeah, it was just in my face. Um, do you want to answer this question? What is it? We... Where is it? This one? What do we got? I know you guys don't bring all of your inventory at markets. I, I always bring everything I have because I don't want to feel guilty if somebody wants a certain scent. I ran out of it, but I have some city at home. How do you deal with this? Um, okay. All right, Patricia, that's a great question. So what I like to do is I actually will, uh, because we do have a uh, um, the website and I would hate to be at the vendor event, sell a candle and then someone on, on the website buy it and then I can't fulfill it because I sold it at the market. So I actually have two sets of inventory. I take 
every cent, uh, large and small. And I do five. I do five large of, of every cent and five small of every cent. I keep them individually in totes with a sheet, inventory sheet. And then I have um, a designated area for the inventory that's on the website. Um, that way, um, nothing kind of gets double sold where I can't fulfill, you know. Um, if we sell out, we sell out, you know, um, which is always good. And then what I'll do is the next day after the market, I'll take an inventory. Cause if I know I brought five of everything, I'll do an inventory. Uh, wax melts, I actually take eight. We do eight of every wax mill scent um, and then five of large, five of small. And we, and we bring a lot of different scents with us. Right. So the majority of the time we don't actually typically sell out of one particular scent unless yeah. it's like- We'll have like 16 or 18. Depends on the time of year because yeah. we'll either bring the full nostalgia collection or we'll have half, maybe half nostalgia, half nostalgia and, then like and then the, the fall, fall scent, the winter, winter scent. the spring, yeah. things like that. Um, but then let's say it's the next day uh, after the event. Then I go through and I do an inventory um, of what is needed to ref refill the vendor event uh, inventory. So I'll tally it up. I'll actually, if I have no orders that aren't incomplete, I make sure all my orders from the website are completed. I'll go to the uh, inventory area of what's made and I'll actually take it and remove it from the website and, and fulfill the inventory for the vendor event. And then I go and see what I have in stock for the website. And then I'll make a note of what needs to be made and then I'll fulfill that. It's a lot of work. But that way, if something sells, it's available to be sold. Yeah. Yeah. I'd hate, I'd hate for inventory to not be correct and somehow five summer times get sold, but we had them at the market and then we sold it there and then I can't fulfill an order and then yeah. someone's got to wait like a week or a week and a half to get a candle. I want to get things done as soon as possible and ship out as soon as possible, just like the wholesale orders. We do a lead time of what, 10 to 14 days. Yeah, but usually but we get it out pretty fast. We get it out in seven or I get it out in six or, or nine. I'm always trying to get those wholesale orders done yeah. and, and white label orders done as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, so I guess to answer the question on how do you, just keeping a, a record, an inventory record of, um, and having two sets of inventory, a vendor inventory and a website inventory. Yeah. And then uh, we use Inventora for uh, uh, software? software. Yeah. 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 Inventora, which helps a lot. And I like it. It was, I learned it pretty quick. It wasn't too, you know, it wasn't too hard. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to make adjustments and changes and audits and um, put in new products, take away products. Yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. It's, it's user-friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's very nice of you to offer to help us tomorrow. We're okay. And also, you'd be driving pretty far from Ventura down here. Oh, stay in Ventura. The weather yeah. would be great. Yeah. <laughs> I know those cold mornings. Yeah, we're from that area. Yeah. He nice grew up overcast. In and he, Over I said you grew up in Inventura. Oh. In Ventura. <laughs> yeah, Ventura, Ventura County. Mm-hmm uh usually five we take five uh candles yeah. in each size and we yeah. take eight wax melts and that seems to be good for the amount of uh traffic that we get at the yeah. markets tomorrow apparently is supposed to be like a really big event they um, claim ten thousand people every year but yeah you never so know. we're gonna, we're gonna find know. out we're gonna find out yeah we sell one candle we'll be we'll be excited and then that momentum builds mm -hmm. you know Yeah, uh, inventory. Yeah, um, let me see if I can. I don't know if this is gonna inventory. Let me put it in the here and go here. Oh, you can do that. Yeah, inventory. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do have a affiliate link. That's not an affiliate link. That's just a direct link to them. But I do have one under um, on my videos that I list, um, but uh, let me see. 
All right. I know we went back to answering questions. I know. I know you're enjoying it. I don't mind, I don't mind you? answering. You're enjoying it. Yeah. What What was the inspiration? Uh, part of the family wants to know what was the inspiration uh, to start the candle business be, um, besides the nostalgia, nostalgic memories? Um, I think it was. Um, so, so here's really what it was. It was, I had my eBay business and I had a goal of going full time in 2020 with my eBay business. Um, and eBay is very challenging. It's very hard. Uh, it's honestly kind of like dirty work in a way. Um, oh, I, going to the bins and the yeah. Thrifty so I used to go up to San Bernardino and, um, and, the and go to yeah. uh, like, so there's, there's thrift stores and then there's outlets of thrift stores, which is basically all the clothes that didn't that didn't get sold at yeah. the regular retail thrift store just mixed into would bins. all be in a bunch of bins. So, I mean, it's, you know, coming home with the amount of dirty yeah. stuff that you're touching, but you're going through and you're trying to find clothes that are going to have value to them. Um, so I really wanted to, you know, go full time with that, but it was a lot of work. And then um, it was Christmas of 2018. I want to say I made my sister a candle for her birthday um, cause her birthday is, um, cause her birthday is, uh, like a couple weeks before Christmas. And I don't know what caught my eye. I think I saw a video or something popped up that was like making candles. And I was like, Oh, that sounds fun. Um, so I just used like Hobby Lobby wax and it was a lot of fun. And then I decided to make my coworker candles that year as well. And then to be honest, uh, I actually stopped making candles, um, because I found that it gave me a headache and a stomach ache <laughs> in the way that I was making it in the kitchen and with everything closed. And I think I was maybe inhaling when I didn't realize that I shouldn't be doing that. Um, and then about a year later, one of my coworkers had asked me to, uh, they wanted a pumpkin spice candle. So I was like, yeah, I can break out the stuff and, you know, cause I still had it. So I made some, and then that just like sparked everything. And then my coworkers were wanting to buy more from me. And I was like, maybe I can actually turn this into a business. And then I actually was making candles on the balcony. Um, and that was easier for me because I, you know, wasn't so overwhelmed with the fragrance. Um, and that was before I knew about proper ventilation and also yeah, respirator straight up and all that kind treasure of treasure hunting. Kayla. Yeah. Um, am I just going on and on while you're reading other stuff? No, I answered a question oh, okay. about how many, but I didn't want to, um, cut you off when you're mm -hmm. telling your story um did you compare inventory to crafty base and what was your deciding factor to be completely honest with you i had not uh looked into an inventory software until diana who is the creator of inventory reached out to me and she said hey um i have an inventory software it's in yeah. beta i'd like for you to test it out and i was like okay um and ever since then i've just been using it because it's super user friendly i like it um, and I actually have no experience with crafty base, but I know that a lot of people really like that as well. Let me see. And, uh, what's the most you've ever spent on a vendor event? Is that talking about like a booth space? Yeah. Both booth fee. Uh, 175. Oh, <laughs> 175. that's so expensive. Yeah. Um, and so, there's times where we only go home and we did 200, so we made 25 bucks. Which one? I'm just saying those vendor events. Oh, we pay something like that, yeah, and it's been so slow, yeah, yeah, that happens, well, yeah. That I mean, happens. I don't know if that's ever luckily, we've been very lucky with, with it getting at least double back yeah. with, with ours, but um, yeah, see, I've spent 400, but a hundred thousand attending, yeah. That's uh what? Yeah. See, if you're going to a big event though, like it depends. Oh, yeah. Like there's 100, been hundred thousand attendees. Attendee. Oh, I'm thinking yeah, like a hundred oh, over a year? No. <laughs> over four four hundred for that event, but it but yeah, but I mean if it's worth attending. it. Um there's there's yeah. some companies that even provide an easy up. There's some companies that provide electricity mm -hmm. um and some that don't, but then charge more than the others. Yeah. Um it's I don't know, man. Yeah. Bins can be dirty, but it's like treasure. Oh yeah. That's yeah. what you were. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it was a, it was kind of like a high, like I would be yeah. in the zone of just, you know, looking for certain things. 
yeah, and I'd get clothes out of it sometimes. I get some new sweats mm -hmm. and a t-shirt or something you'd find. Yeah. And like, People right. had commented on your hat. You guys see his hat, California Candle Supply? <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, go stop in there. Tell them we <laughs> sent you and tell them you want a hat. <laughs> I like the hat. Yeah, they're cool over there. Yeah, those you are a good group out. of people over there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, spent three three 350 but I made $1,600. Awesome. And that's after our pop-up tent broke from a, a downpour. downpour. Luckily, we have an extra product. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, that is really awesome. Better than us. We've never made that much. I didn't, no, no, we've never made that much. So you did an event. Uh, so in paid, April. So paid 275, sold three grand. Wow. That's freaking awesome. That's crazy. Gosh, I had heard from somebody um, that they made like two to three grand uh, per vendor event. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this would be great. Uh, we've never broke a grand. So never, <laughs> never. We never broke 800. But, but I think it's because of the markets that we attend, they are smaller. Yeah. And yeah. it is, you know, and to and, us and, making and, four or five hundred is like and great. you get what you pay for because yeah. if we're only paying one fifty or one seventy five or one twenty five, mm -hmm. um, who knows? We could drive an hour to the beach or something, an hour and a half, and set up and spend the whole day. We might have had to pay, I don't know, three hundred bucks, but we might do better. Yeah. But um, yeah. I mean. I mean, and pay for, yeah, some right? people pay $50 and they make a thousand other people pay. One time we did an event and it was free. <laughs> yes, it was did. free. It and was it, free. And we did like 300 and, bucks. And we were and like, we were no way. We were it was great. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. awesome. It was only a three hour event. Too. Yeah. It was like a private we HOA event that they invited us to come to. And they, they, um, they had kayak races and they had this bridge and they had us set up and there was maybe 15 other vendors and we just said yes we just opened opportunity it's like yeah that's kind of what we're doing with tomorrow's event yeah too, it was like, like okay we'll try, try it. it out and it was free and i said it's free we got to do it and it was really <laughs> nice going because i'm like i don't know he's like, it's free <laughs> yeah it's free. and it was a daytime one we were yeah. worried about the heat yeah but I, we were over a lake in the, the bridge and yeah it was it like was a, a good private, turnout it was all right yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i mean making three it was 300 bucks i think we made yeah which is oh awesome my gosh yeah. like couldn't believe that because it was literally yeah. we didn't pay anything for it so it was great yeah i was like if we could guarantee this every weekend i would do this every weekend yeah, events are a hit or a hit or miss, definitely. I mean, we've done events before where we're like, uh, yeah, we're not doing this. I love again. watching these packing videos when they fill a huge amount of orders. I feel like oh shit, yeah, the words. No, no. love hate relationship. Oh, okay. Well it, it, it's hard to compare yourself yeah. when there's people that you, you know we go days without an order. Mm -hmm. And it, it we feel it, but you know, when we get that notification that we got an order, it you get this you get this like adrenaline jump, like dump in your brain. You're like, oh yes, yeah. You yeah. know, it's like awesome. And then before you know it, you might have three orders, four orders. I mean, we're not crazy, super busy, but we're always trying to find um, another way. We're always mm -hmm. trying to, we try not to be stagnant, right? Yeah. Ideas of um, wedding, real estate, uh, winery, um, vendor events, um, a w company award opportunities, yeah. stuff like that, uh, where we have to put ourselves out there f just for the chance of opportunity. Yeah. And, the, and the, I even, it could be a no, but I, you got to try and you learn from it. I went through and I just tried to email just a bunch of random businesses, yeah. um, you know, asking them if, basically if they'd be interested in having their own candle line of like, you know, white label and stuff like that. Um, and I had one person yeah. respond to me and that uh, was even like on Instagram wow. Ruby, or we have an email list. Um, um, we notify everybody that's on the email list about um, the markets we're going to be at. And then um, on Instagram um, on your right, you post mm -hmm. on the events. Yeah. And then me, I mean, I have an Instagram, but I only did it for motorcycle racing. And um, oh, he'll still post I about candle post, stuff all the time. And like, people I'm sure are like, "Why like, are you posting candle stuff?" I'm like, "That's what I'm doing." But, 
do it but, again, those guys. But, but they know. They like, know. you're not racing. I'm like, yeah, I got a baby yeah. on the way. Yeah. Now, money, we got to pay for hospital fees. Now, when Can't it comes racing. Now, for Sophie, when it comes to what I did with emailing random companies, you do have to be prepared that so many companies, especially depending on how big they are, they're getting emails all the time. I mean, I know myself, I get emails all the time. So, trying to make it as personal as possible is a challenge. Um, but I did my best to try to make it as personal as possible. Um, but I'm really also wanting to get actual brochures printed out um, for both wholesale with this new uh, line that I'm creating for wholesale and also for white label as well. Um, and taking it into, you know, different stores around here as well to to actually, you know, physically talk to people. Cause I, I'd rather do that meet them in person and talk to them. But when there's so many other opportunities that are, you know, across the, across the country, trying to make your email as personable as possible, um, is, uh, is definitely a challenge, but it's doable. Yeah. And events are a hit or a miss, but it, it, even if it's a slow night and you hand your card out, people see your banner. Um, it's better than sitting at home, not doing anything, you know, at mm -hmm. least you're out there on the grind trying to you know get that opportunity um what else uh i got my first wholesale and white label accounts this year that's really exciting yeah Super it's, exciting. Scary. it's scary yeah. it's scary it is scary i, I know you i know? was nervous at first too but now yeah. i'm like bring it on that, I want yeah, more of yeah yeah you get more comfortable that over time yeah let's see let's see uh for a newbie is it a good idea to set yeah. up your own website before you launch or should you just focus on selling to friends and family first um yeah friends and family first so you get that feedback you know i i think that uh giving away your candles yeah. to friends and family obviously yeah. you know I've, I've mentioned that before of giving your candles away um to get the feedback because again, you don't want to, you're not trying to put it on your friends and family to support your business. Um, but you, you do want to get real feedback from people that yeah. are candle makers or, that are going to burn it, like, you know, like a you regular person. Someone like your coworkers or something mm -hmm. and you get to get an honest answer. Um, but it is, but it sometimes is. Sometimes family will lie to you. It like is her mom will be like, oh, it's, you're my daughter. It smells amazing. It works perfect. It's like, what do you mean? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just saying there's some parents and no, some people that will mean. just say what they think yeah. you want to hear. Yeah. But you want a, a raw, true answer. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. No. And that's what I was yeah. saying about having a product that sells itself that is not something that you're constantly being like, oh, buy this, buy this. Um, and that people are actually reaching out to be able to purchase more from you because they love it so much um uh no i don't know what bitwell is um cat bitwell says do you go to the bitwell sorry to take away from the candle making built well built well yeah i don't no. know what that is mm -hmm. is that a motorcycle thing i don't know maybe is it a type um, of tool brand tools i don't know i got tools yeah hmm. um know. Let me see. So have you made your bread candle yet? Yes. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. So I made a so bunch of testers, uh, uh, wax and, the, and the bread was the first one I had that day. She had me make it. Yeah. It smells yeah. like bread. It yeah, smells it smelled good. Like, my sister, apparently she didn't think that it smelled like one bread. person out of everybody. My brother-in-law did. My dad didn't. But he doesn't know. But he doesn't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when know it, when, it's, when like. it's burning, it definitely, uh, yeah, it, it definitely yeah. is like, I mean, it smells the same, you know, yeah. it's cold throw, hot throw. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. pretty crazy. Yeah. It's really crazy. Um, yeah. yeah. So white label is, um, is taking your product and then putting somebody else's brand name and label onto it so they can have it for their own business. Yeah. I thought that was private label for the longest time. I've been saying private label this whole time, but I guess private label is a little bit more customized than that. White label is just taking your product and then putting somebody else's brand name on it. Um, my sister and family are nice too. They never say anything bad. Oh, my sister right? has no problem. My mom will never say anything no. bad about how much her son screws up or does something wrong. She will she will fight tooth and nail to say I'm, you know. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, but you on days, it's not true. Yeah, but you don't, like, 
No. It's not like you're doing things wrong all the time. No, I know, but that's how parents are. No, I know I what know. you mean. I know what you mean. You know how many times we're going to, if you know, this boy comes mm-hmm. and we're going to start immediately go to defending him? Oh, of course. When he it's can be kid. completely wrong. <laughs> See? It's your kid. See? <laughs> that's what you're saying. Oh, man. Um, no, I'm going to blame him on everything. <laughs> Even if it's something I do. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I know we'll put him to work and he's gonna be my scapegoat oh how can a candle smell like bread it does it does i don't know it does it, i don't know it's, it's amazing crazy. it's crazy where is it it's in the bathroom it's in the bathroom yeah because i had it lit we it do a lot of our tests in the bathroom because there's no like wind draft or yeah. anything like that yeah yeah um but we have a lot of testers I've, up there I've been doing events for a year and a half now, and I've known in my neighborhood. Uh, so I decided it was time to launch. Eric, I used your launch checklist. Oh, very cool. Nice. That's awesome. Here, actually, that's something I can post too. I don't know if a lot of you, um, let me see. Sorry, I feel like the lighting is, um, is this is this it? Let me see. Yeah, this is it. So I'm going to put this in the chat. So this is... Um, a free candle business launch checklist, but it also gets you on my business email list. So I send out, it was supposed to be, <laughs> supposed to be uh, weekly emails, but pregnant Erica is doing it like two weeks, every two weeks, every two to three weeks. I do my best. <laughs> um, but if you're, uh, if you haven't already gotten on it, that's also how I can connect more with you guys as well. And I also like really doing that. So that's really cool. Um, do you guys have, do you guys do the coffee bean thing when smelling different candles? Yeah, scents? Yeah. Does that really yeah, work? It, it helps. Well, that video that we did, so strong. the video that we did where we were smelling mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, well for you, you really needed it. Yeah. I, I can, I don't know. I felt like almost the works. coffee beans are so strong, so strong. Definitely um, works. Yeah. Super strong. Oh my goodness. Huh. Smelling your oh. own skin works as well. Interesting. I can imagine like smelling this and be like, and then like smelling, <laughs> like smelling on camera. That'd be so funny. <laughs> but it's a good base. They smell. Yeah. That's true. Um <laughs> Uh, my wife is a yeah. stay-at-home mom looking for extra income. Would you recommend candles and wax melts? Uh, the only the only thing is it costs money, uh, a lot of money and time and and um, investment if you really get into it. Now, if it's just a hobby and you're not making a whole lot and you're just gonna you know resell them, make a small small quantities, mm-hmm. yeah, but. It can be pretty damn expensive. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it. I would say, um, wow, man, I would say wax mouths. I mean, there's so many people that just do wax mouths, and I'm like, okay, that's well, the way to do put, it. put it this way. I mean, if that's, if it's something that she really wants to do and that she's going to enjoy, go for it. You know, don't do it just because you want to make extra money. Do it because you actually enjoy making candles and wax melts. Yeah. Or you're interested in the hobby. Yeah. And find you a hobby it. you like. And, and then, then turn that hobby into something and that's, that's going to make you That's the main thing. Money. Yeah. Because I, I understand the the business side and wanting to make extra money with it. Yeah. But then really enjoying what you do. Because if you get into it in, in a business and then you find that you don't like it, you hate yeah. it, it's yeah. miserable, then it's not going to be enjoyable. Yeah. Um, did I understand you correctly that you no longer do room sprays? Oh. Um, we discontinued that for probably the last year. And then Christopher and was I like, wanted to make some. I wanted to learn. And yeah. Why don't we just bring them back? Me so they're back formula, so yeah i made um, another batch and bye cat thank you so much for uh joining us and asking questions and hanging out we appreciate it but yeah no so we, i made some room sprays and uh I, I i like it i it's not it's not very hard um there's a lot of components to it um and i and, actually i ordered um the room spray base from midwest a uh, fragrance company yeah. that's literally just and to be honest the ones that we had in the past um that we use we're always using them yeah we always, we're always use them yeah that's so I mean, true 
uh, whether it's um, in the kitchen uh, or the um, trash. Funny or... enough, I think we actually use that more than any other product that yeah, we make. It's yeah. actually the room when space. I had to, when I would stay at the Motel Sixes at different various towns when I travel. Um, I always brought a Golden State room spray because some of those Hotel Sixes. Yeah, man, not, not, they good. Were not good. Um, um, especially if they put you in like a uh, cigarette smoking room. Yeah, or yeah. one that wasn't supposed to be, but then ended up yeah, being, being one. Or so like right next to the dumpster that one time. Oh, man. Oh, man. That was so bad. We yeah. did it one one time where literally like there was like a gap underneath the door and like the dumpster spell was like coming in so oh. we would just be spraying the golden state all the time yeah i like that one a lot golden state's good but uh, yeah no so we, we're gonna have them um i'm gonna take uh i might take them off the website for the vendor event tomorrow so they're not double purchased if they sell yeah they haven't i mean we put up put them up but they haven't really sold we haven't had, had one like that first round the first they sold. round yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, but honestly, the, the nice thing about room sprays is that, um, they're, they're so quick. You to don't make. have to cure them. Like yeah. they're just, they're no quick temperature to make. thing. So even if they do sell on the website, I can and make them, sell, I can yeah. make them, um, yeah. ahead of schedule, you know what I mean? Like Sunday. So, so which would be easier to make room sprays or wax melts? Um, I personally think that room sprays, just because you don't have to worry about heat. Um, yeah. Yeah. And melting the wax and melting the wax. Yeah. Um, so that already takes away, I mean, room sprays could be as easy as just putting the base with fragrance, mixing it up and then pouring it into a container. So I would say room sprays are definitely yeah. easier. And distilled water. Mm -hmm. Well, with the base, like for instance, the base that we're getting from Midwest. You don't have to Co. use distilled water? No, it's literally, that's, that's everything's just everything? in there. And then you mix that with fragrance oh, and then put it in the bottle. Wow. Yeah. That speeds things up. I know. Wow. <laughs> I know. So, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. I'm mixing one, two, three. Four. I'm mixing four things yeah. right now. And even then, it's not even that much. I mean, in terms of, you know, measuring things out, but having a base is definitely really nice. As somebody said, Cal Candle also has a base too. Okay. I feel like I knew that, but I don't know. Like, I know that, um, I know there's also, uh, like, what are they called? Diffusers. Like I know that diffusers are also something that a lot of people like too. About a huge container, Tyron about a huge container of base. They said they told me just add fragrance to it. What's the general formula for room sprays? Um, I think it's like to be honest, I I we'll have got, to look it up because I've never even experienced this new base. Yeah. So yeah, I have to look that up too. Yeah, um, I'm not as what well. What I'm doing now is poly twenty preservative distilled water fragrance. and fragrance oil and, and there's a I percentage got, to that and i got um and i got uh what was i gonna say i got the original formula from another youtube video and i basically was like i don't know how to do room sprays but we're gonna learn i'm, I'm so. gonna learn from this and every time i've talked about it, i've always given credit like that's not my formula but with just having the base and then adding fragrance i feel like it's gonna be so much nicer <clears throat> thanks hen hen house bath co oh yeah thank you yeah like like i said we i don't know the quality of the the live feed or if our voice is matching with the movement of our lips but we never set up live so hopefully yeah it, I, I it's hope, okay i hope that it hasn't been too laggy this whole time um but uh yeah he he was he's kicking me throughout this whole video Oh, what has he? Your, yeah, he has. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Get her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I feel like a lot of people are are, are heading out. But as soon as I put my my hand on your belly, he stops. I know, right? Yeah. But you oh, want to call it? Yeah, you guys been doing great. No connection issues at all. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll do more lives. It's it's honestly easier with him because it's easier to have that like banter back and forth than me like you yeah. know and i find and chris would always be like you need to slow down in lives and i'm like i can't help it i talk really fast and then i'm like trying to catch up with everything yeah. so when i'm talking and you're trying to look at other questions it's very helpful too yeah um but uh i'm gonna call it i know chris could probably do this all night i'm gonna call it um <laughs> 
So I appreciate you being here with me. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Um, Just add one more thing to the resume. <laughs> Live chats. Remember the last candle co. I know, right? Um, I'm just here for support because at the end of the day, she's the one that knows everything. And I only know what she, from the questions I've asked her, what she's kind of, you know, basically but, taught me. But you know a lot now. I mean, and, and especially with experience of actually making the products. I mean, you've yeah. learned so much from experience. Yeah. So I do enjoy putting the camera up and just working and letting it film me. And then she like can do the music or her voiceover. Yeah. I think it's cool because I'm kind of helping, you know, like maybe I'll do a room is. spray one. I'll do yeah. a room spray one. We did the wax melt, wax melt samples. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't know when the next live will be. Um, maybe we'll try to do it at least once a month or maybe we'll do it a little bit more before baby's here. It's just depending on um, when we can get together and do yeah. it. I, I feel like evenings are probably better would you yeah. guys say evenings are better i've tried to look up to see what is the best timing um to do lives and everything and i've heard sometimes like the late morning but then yeah. i would think like the evening like if you know you guys are like you, like i don't know making dinner or laying down or yeah and a know, lot of the answers kind of a lot of the answers to the questions are kind of like top of the head off the cuff but a lot of those questions i believe you have quite a few youtube videos um that explains some of those and get more in depth mm -hmm. with a lot of from tonight's live as far as questions yeah. that were asked yeah definitely so um to try like to some of the search YouTube if video. there's anything i didn't answer like memory box candle co and then like put like a basic yeah. thing of what it is and hopefully yeah. i have a video um if not maybe suggest you know in like a comment a recent video comment or uh something. due dates like sometime in september yeah it's like yeah. late september yes. early october Mid, somewhere yeah. around there yeah, Mid, yeah. Um, I, I, I still think it's like, they're just estimating. They don't know he's going to come when he's ready. Yeah. yeah. Um, but 6 PM on East so coast. 3 PM for us afternoon. Yeah. 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 Cause I know that, well, five o'clock is five o'clock our time. Oh yeah. Eight o'clock. Eastern. Yeah. So yeah, maybe a little bit earlier next time. We can always yeah. mix it up. Yeah. Mix yeah. It up. All right. Okay, well, thanks, wow, guys. Wow, two and a half hours. I know. Flew by. I know. Usually, yeah. I would go an thanks hour and questions. be like, okay, I'm yeah. done. <laughs> and uh, taking the time to join us and uh, yeah. hear us rant. Yeah. Thank thank you guys so much. <laughs> yeah. So much. Um, and then I'll definitely um, do this from now on that I will make a post and actually have like a premiere of when we're going live because I know in the past I would be yeah. like, I just feel like going live right now. I'm just going to go live. Um, but I know it's helpful to actually have a little bit of a heads up on when yeah. we're going to be going live. So Yeah, and we'll give you, we'll, next time we'll give you an update on how that vent, tomorrow's vendor event mm -hmm. went, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and then the testing of these uh, Midwest fragrance oils. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All Ooh, right. I want to eat. eat. I know. I'm hungry too. Yeah. All right. Um, I Thank you so much, you guys. We will see you next time. Have a great night, a great weekend. Um, enjoy yourself on whatever you're doing and, um, we will see you guys next time. Yeah. Do your little thing. See you next time. See you <laughs> in the next video. <laughs> All right. Bye guys. All right, bye guys. Um, okay.